there, I was going back and watching some recordings, and who boy was my mic blown out. Um, so I'm going to do a little going back and forth here, making sure that I'm not too hot, but not too quiet. I wonder if it was the EQ I was putting on my voice. That, that seems about right. I mean, it's a little low for me, but... I'll just give it a little more goose. Yeah, that seems okay. I, uh... I guess I wonder. Because I can see it. It looks like the box hard limits at negative six, which is good. But I don't know if that blows out at negative six, or if it's... If it's, um... Okay, you guys can let me know. <laughs> Does this sound normal and okay? This right here. Is it staticky? Is it crackling? And if I get really into the mic, does it start overloading? Because I can see it peeking out right there. Close mic is peaked. Okay. So, let's see here. I'm going to make a tone back here. It's not going to be a scream, but it'll be loud. And I want you guys to know if it gets crackly and, and bubbly and distorting. Hope! <laughs> it's definitely in the red, yeah. The trick is to make it so that normal talking is, is bright and present and, okay. It's bright and present in there, but that if I get loud, that it doesn't blow out the mic all the time. Because it, it makes it sound louder than it is when it clips out like that. Which is not good, but, uh, hmm, hmm. Usually the solution I have is to just really, is to uh, put the mic coming in at very low gain and then juice it really hard in the EQ, so maybe that's what I need to do. I'll try that a little bit. <laughs> So if I take the edge off there, then I can turn these things on and give it, let's say, four. Four decibels of gain. Ah, uh, ah, uh, ah. Uh. Okay, so now, let me put the hard limiter lower. Okay, so now, um... It should be bright and not distorting. Hopefully. But what if I get louder? Oh. Uh, are you still best friends with Reggie or super best friends with Reggie? Well, I gotta admit, it's been a while since we talked. So I have to admit that we are but super best friends. It's smoother than now when loud? Okay. I think this, okay, yeah, I'm, I'm coming back to the same audio conclusions that I came to before. I think I'll just keep it there. Alright, I'm very excited for this. Deadly Premonition 2 is one of the, like, more quirky and definitely one of the, or sorry, the original Deadly Premonition. It's one of the more ambitious games, just fundamentally ambitious. Have you opened any packages yet? No, and I still don't think I've gone to the post office. Um, oh man. They're keep- they're keep- You'd be amazed how, how difficult it can be. Shocking way to get to the post office. Uh, I'll probably do that this weekend. I did finish the first one, yeah. Um, me three peak- Wait, hold on. Me three PK? Well, you shouldn't PK, but thank you for the- thank you for the sub, regardless. Belaner? Hmm. Thank you for the prime. It's always a shot in the dark trying to pronounce things. Nigerian Prince needs money. Thank you for the prime. That's not going to help you, but... I, I'll pass it back. Hit me up in my emails. Ooh, this, this music, though. It's a Meep King. Gotcha. Okay.
Wolf's last name? Okay. Yeah, no worries. Well, thank you for uh, thank you for dropping the prime. Appreciate that. Okay. I'm worried it's gonna get much louder. But we'll leave it here for now. Oh. I read twelve. Thanks for the ten bucks, man. Um. Love your content on Inside Gaming and Funhouse. Don't keep up with news often because of work. Just found out you left RT. Keep up the good work. Always hilarious. Well, thank you so much. Um, damn. Yeah, thank you. I appreciate it. It's been great. Um, I'm going to go into max video game respect mode, though, for a second. Get this intro. Cinematic style. God damn it. What a way to start the new year. At this rate, I'll be dead by Easter. Well, we got video Quiet games down, already, Agent huh? Jones. Hell yeah. You're on the clock. Quiet down. <laughs> you you have any idea what you've done? I'd be half naked in Havana right now if you hadn't shown up. Soaking up some rays, surrounded by one a of those, harem like, of bikini queens. A it says stick up, but you can like... And a seafood slathered Havana style pizza in the other. What did I do to deserve this? Does God hate me? No. The regional bureau chief merely issued this a This is the power order. of video games. <laughs> oh. Yeah. How could I forget? Man. Special order to rob me of my well-deserved vacation. You want pizza? I'll buy you some pizza. You can find that junk anywhere. I want pizza. Whoa! Hey! Hold on a minute. What did you just say? Pizza is not junk. Dang it. Should have waited. Our robot is playing and it runs like gas. Prepare for moments of 15. Yeah, I know people are all upset about the FPS, Agent but... Jones, don't let him take control of the conversation. That was the original the game, too. you let your guard down, he'll strike. It did not run well. You don't come to Deadly Premonition for, like, hot graphics. I'm not not interested in I ray tracing. Red. Remember? That's fine. I know it's not gonna happen. We'll see. I know that it's like, I don't know, man. People are just like... They're just c consistent. It's open. Come on in. <gasps> it's Francis. It's York. Or was it Francis Zach Morgan? Is Zach his brother? Do we get, do we get hot fucking reveals this early? Big, uh, big plot developments. You don't come to this game for 60 FPS. Yeah. Uh, yes. <laughs> Their default Unity assets for background NPCs. Okay. What did people think this game was gonna be? I don't. Know. I, I really hate it's it's fucking bullying, man. It kind of is of everybody just getting around and being like, <laughs> "This game is shitty." Like, fuck, whatever. You don't go to Lighthouse and get pissed off because it doesn't have superhero fights, you know? You have questions for us. That's why you're here, isn't it? Oh my god. It's evil, evil York? Negative dimension? Maybe York split into good and bad. 
Zach is York after he had his revelation? Oh, is it, so I have finished Deadly Premonition 1, but it was a long time ago, and I don't remember what happened. Kind of. Yeah, I don't remember anything happening to York. Mr. Morgan, before we question you, allow me to first read you your rights. Anything you say may be used against you in a court of law. Please keep that in mind as you speak. This is also like... Uh, sorry, there's a washing machine in the background. Do we have permission to film this? Hopefully with the way my mic's set up now, it doesn't read as hard. Yeah, this is a Switch exclusive. Hmm? Don't worry, my fairy. They're free to do whatever they like. Something wrong, Mr. Morgan? <clears throat> I'm FBI Special Agent Aaliyah Davis, and this is- Simon Jones. An analyst from the Boston branch. He's been monitoring us for years now. Oh, uh, hi. Nice. It's a good. It's a good name card. And you know what? I'm gonna say it. I'm gonna say it. Seriously. Us gamers haven't had to suffer through low frame rates in a while. A southern bell and a lonesome loser who can't catch. We're a losing break. our edge. <laughs> Quite the uncanny duo. You'd be the perfect stars for the latest video game. Oh boy. Isn't that right, my fairy? <laughs> How many years has it been since someone came to chat with us? <laughs> Dude, meta. Oh, but it's like Kojima don't levels of meta. Ask me about my fairy. Suit of fifty-one levels meta. That's a private matter. Okay. It's hard to tell what he's thinking, but my eyes can't be deceived. If he's hiding something, it'll come out in his face. Is there a face scanning mini game? Ooh. Oh, I have detective vision. I use meter though. You solved many difficult cases across your career, utilizing your own unique MO. You've expertly cracked cases that were otherwise thought to be unsolvable. According to our records, after joining the FBI in 2002, you quickly solved two drug ring-related kidnapping cases. In 2003, you solved the Inside Out Flesh Skinner case in the suburbs of Pittsburgh. In 2004, the Jeffrey Dahmer wannabe case in Milwaukee. And also the Stuffed Human Collector case in St. Louis that very same year. Aeronautical, thanks for the sub. Some damn good coffee. Then, in 2005, you coincidentally happened to solve the Lise Clarkson murder case while on vacation. You went on to solve many other cases after that, all of them seemingly inexplicable. Did you really solve these cases all on your own? So wait, is his fairy York? And his fairy is the one that goes out into the world and like solves cases? And then communicates that back through the tapes or whatever? There are no records of you using a wide-scale investigative team or working with anyone else. All I remember from the first game is that York would always, just like Twin Peaks and talking to Diane, would do asides to a character named Zack that was never explained. Um, so this seems to be Zack. Which is kind of what New Twin Peaks did, you know? I feel like. It kind of immediately wrapped up one of the long-running things. They, they revealed who Diane was. How did you ever accomplish such monumental feats all by yourself? Does it count as... Does it count as...
kind of is imitation when it's so wild in the first? I don't know. It was York was a persona created when his parents were killed. At a point, Deadly Premonition 1, he meets part. with a killer and abandons the York persona, goes back to Zack. Ah! His appearance changed with it, and everyone just knew he was Zack again. Okay, my bad. Thank you for explaining that, Captain. I do not remember that part. Partner. Uh, hey, Pistastic. The doing, FBI doing files right. show no record of you ever working with a partner. I have installed curtains, uh, which Stephanie picked out and are perfect and wonderful. Uh, but now, there's not a glowing orb of light behind me. Uh, so I can see my monitor. I'll still probably open it at certain phases of the afternoon. But uh, this is certainly in incredibly preferable. I can see everything on my monitors 100% clearly. It's delightful. Is this on the same level Do Twin you Peaks? you you worked with some sort of unofficial partner? Or an outside confidant? Well, I can't say anything about two. But one is down to the point where there are long periods where nothing happens. Like, liter literally true. Uh, both in the show... You know, you'll have clips of, like, some dude sweeping a hallway for three and a half minutes. And that's just part of the show. And maybe it means something, but it probably doesn't. Um, same thing in the game. You have to, like... The first one took place in an open world, and you had to navigate. You had to get in a car and drive, and it took a long time. <laughs> and there was just long sequences of walking and talking and, like, tons of downtime. Um, but that's actually extremely refreshing. Um, like, think, re like, Red Dead, but worse, in terms of, of things being spaced out. Um, but if you're kind of burned out on games that are just non-stop uptime, there's something kind of refreshing about it. Uh, it, it is, does feel more like reading a book than playing a video game, but it's a fun game. It's, it's like a rickety survival horror, basically. You have to go to her apartments. Nice, Nitro. Uh, Taco Cub, thanks for the sub. Gustavs, thank you. So you need some whistling? Yeah, I'm, I'm very excited about the soundtrack. I didn't even follow if the same person's writing the score, but... Uh, that intro piano riff was really, really interesting. Um, interesting is what I'm hoping for. Our partner is... Our partner. We've always worked together. Besides, Bell, you're forgetting one important thing. After the St. Louis case... We stopped by a diner on our way home and caught Thelma and Louise, two highly sought-after fugitives. <laughs> this music is actually really great. I like it a lot. Oh, yes! The acoustic guitar. Yeah, that's, that's hitting right. I like that. It's a new game or a remaster. This is a new game. It is a sequel to... You'd have to be generous to call it a cult hit. A cult classic. Uh, a game called Deadly Premonition. <clears throat> oh, it's not the same people as far as you know? Okay. Yeah, it's not... The instrumentation is different, but I feel like the spirit is the same. Final Fantasy VII guitar vibes, a little bit. Oh, um, you were asking about, does it matter where you watch the podcast? Just wherever is wherever's most convenient for you. <coughs> uh, no, no noticeable difference any old way, really. Let's see here. Using a vision will deplete your concentration, so be careful about using it too much. Well, there's things I could say. Nothing indicates that I have a limited amount of time. This smell. It doesn't surprise me at this point, but it'll be problematic in court if they decide his testimony is unreliable. I won't get another chance to talk to him face to face like this. I need to get him to stop smoking that for a bit. Francis Zack Morgan. He was once an FBI special agent. An extremely talented one. At least that's what they tell me. Perhaps he was a little too talented. He got in their head, and then they got into his. Excuse me, Mr. Morgan. But would you please refrain from consuming that while we speak? So, I'm gonna put something on the board here. This is not something that really anyone ever thinks about. But, 
This game gets immediate credit because when you hit the button to forward the text, there is zero audio gap on the next line. Like, boom, just goes right into it. Which means if you actually time your button presses correctly, you can direct the flow of dialogue. A lot of uh, games like this will have buffer around when you hit the button or when the next line starts. So it, it all feels pretty immediate, which means if you're on your button hits, you can actually make the dialogue kind of go uh, close to the speed of a normal conversation. It's always bugged me that, like, VO in games always has padding around every line that makes it feel really awkward. Um, especially when you have to, you know, you have dialogue choices. I'm talking about... Yes. That. You don't need to worry about us. Always hated the gap when someone interrupts a character. Yeah, I feel like Mass Effect. Tons of times when it's like somebody, and then, and then they just kind of like vacantly react, and then he walks up and punches him. Like, like did you, you knew the punch was coming. Don't get in our way, and we won't get in yours. Unfortunately, questioning doesn't work like that. Our data needs to be consistent. Now please, put out that stinking indulgence right this minute. Stinking indulgence. That's a sick strain. Ah, uh, Astal Yeagle, hey, thank you for the uh, sub. What? <laughs> if we say no. Then I'll put it out myself. Using force. Whoa, whoa, Aaliyah! This is Morgan's house. Besides, it's legal in Massachusetts for individuals to consume cannabis in the comfort of their own homes. And I mean, come on. Yeah, don't be a square. It's medicinal. Exactly. Yeah. Way to go, you ruined his fucking vibe. Huh? What the? Is it just the glow? Huh. Hey, Belle. Why are you dressed so handsomely? What are you talking about? Oh, Pistastic, you're talking about the pitch of the audio going up and down. So, this is something that is kind of confusing. And I don't know it's all that it's always this, but often it is this. Twitch will actually rate scale the stream. So, if you, like, switch uh, qualities, or if it's like a background tab and then you click on it, and it goes from a lower quality to a higher quality, or maybe your connectivity or whatever gets interrupted, what I think will happen is Twitch will switch to a different quality and then rate stretch to like catch up uh, to the video uh, or to slow down to catch to the video, whatever. To uh, make it unbroken, basically. But to kind of compensate for network stuff, it has to squish or stretch the audio, which makes it scale up. So, I don't know if that's happening, but I think that's what it is. The thick black accessory wrapped around your neck. Tex Mex, thank you for the sub. That's a male necktie. The color black represents confidence and interest in the self. And your decision to wear a male tie symbolizes your declaration of war against a predominantly male society. Or perhaps it's a psychological barrier meant to hide the weakness that dwells deep within your psyche. We admire your bravery. I thought you retired from profiling. <laughs> See him, Anderson. Thanks for the sub. <laughs> Bullseye, huh? You're an easy one to read. In order to think with society, a man must first gouge out his eyes and cut off his ears. Don't judge a book by its cover. For someone who's supposed to have been one of our best, you've got an awful eye for people. Or did all that smoke and kill all your little gray cells? Okay, Aaliyah, that's enough. We got some sass. She's smart, but she's also more of a shrew than she lets on. Man, no one calls anyone a shrew to their face anymore, which is great because I think it's... Absence of use has loaded that word with an amazing power, I think. 
Yeah, Agent she's right Jones. There, dude. That's sexual harassment. <laughs> so, Bell. Does that barrier of yours also protect you from violent criminals? <laughs> He's more dangerous than I thought. I can't read him. I'll just have to assault him head on with questions then. First, I'll try using the files on the table to shake him up. These files are from the case that took place just outside of New Orleans in 2005. The agent who handled the case was Francis Zack Morgan, and now he's sitting right in front of me. Just has his case files out? An ornate antique chessboard. Looks like he stopped halfway through the game. But who was playing with him? How much will it blow your mind when the game is 2D platforming? I would accept it. I would I would welcome it. Two FPS platforming? I don't care, man. It's Deadly Premonition 2, I'll play it. Stage Forget. four progressive malignant tumor. Oh shit. How do humans behave when they know death is just around the corner? And what if that so human sad. is also a high-functioning sociopath? Uh, did you just start? I did, yeah. This is like ten, ten minutes into the game, maybe. That chessboard looks rather old. And you can't even buy those ivory pieces anymore. Right. They were banned by the Sites Treaty. That was made that in, is a fun fact. in Thank the 1900s. Uh, Fiori, thank you for the thank you for the sub. Yeah, we need an F F for Zach here. Bad taste, but the weight of the ivory just feels so good in our hands. You play chess alone? Is that a crime? No, but it's a hard game to enjoy when you're all by yourself. He's probably just replicating famous games, or trying to solve problems from a chess workbook. Right, Morgan? I may not look it, but I'm actually a bit of a chestnut myself. When I was in school, I used to pore over every issue of Chess Life, the magazine published by the U.S. Chess Federation. Oh, man. What's that line? You put in a nickel, you're going to get the whole song? Well, unfortunately, your guess is completely wrong, Agent Jones. He isn't replicating a famous game, nor is he solving workbook problems. There isn't a single chess book to be found in this apartment. Fucking nerd. <laughs> Shut up, and nerd. I find any this isn't about you. Websites in his internet history. He was simply playing chess. All alone. That's literally every NPC in this game. Yeah, I haven't I haven't run into the uh, any of the uh, so. sequel NPCs. The characters in Deadly Premonition 1 were delightfully weird. I gotta admit, I love games that are stocked with just weird people. There's something about it that makes it feel more like a video game reality, you know, like the Mother series. It's always what I go back to, it's just like... People who are so, um... I guess what it speaks to is like, it's a world full of characters that don't care about you, the gamer. Which makes it feel more accurate. Shenmue, L.A. Noir, yeah, exactly, yeah. A, a world filled with people who don't give a shit. Like, to, to some degree, Oblivion and Skyrim kind of, but you become, like, the hero of those respective things, and then that, that starts to break down. But, gosh, is it nice. It's a nice in a video game to run into somebody like, what's your, what's your deal? Go away. I only care about my carrots. <laughs> what's wrong with that, Bell? I don't understand it. How could a single human being seriously play as both sides? You just publicly confessed to stealing personal data. Oh, these are not so much weird as openly hostile. So far, I don't like any of them. That'll be interesting. Oh, Jamie Lannister. I started Kingdom Come Deliverance, but I didn't get very far. And I really, uh, I really want to go back to that. That's, that's like big time backlog right there. Seems like that's a much bigger problem. Oh no. Yeah, the triangle Everything of dust. Everything done in a perfectly very... legal manner. <laughs> That's been called out in numerous camera shots. Clearly he was eating pizza. We simply happened to intercept a, a handful of data being sent out from an unknown origin. 
Ooh, now she's really trying to scare us. Did you hear that, my fairy? Serious nightmare fuel. I'm gonna do it again. So does it just tell you what advances the story, basically? Stage four progress pad oh, yeah. one. Mr. Morgan, may I ask you a question purely out of curiosity? Hey, Cyan, is Kingdom Come Deliverance a fun game? I think it aims to create a certain experience that is fun for certain people, but I don't think it's trying to be fun for everybody. If it makes you uncomfortable, just let me know, and I'll retract it. Belle, what's wrong? You sure put a lot of effort into that approach. It's a question about death. About this body? Are you afraid of what's coming? Think carefully about why we're smoking this, then ask us again. Honestly, we're not afraid. Rather, we find it intriguing. <laughs> intriguing? Yes. <sighs> Bell, have you ever been to the Grand Canyon in winter? No. In the dead of winter, the Grand Canyon is terribly cold. Colder than you could imagine. A cold that no photograph could ever express. The sun. <laughs> Powerless. And the temperature drops below zero. Right in the middle of the day. Meaning? <laughs> Meaning, you can't really understand something until you experience it for yourself. Yeah, Anon. It... If you want to learn more about us, I think I lost track of what's going on. That'll happen. Experience. Well, I think that's to be expected. Do you remember the homicides that took place in Lucare, Louisiana in 2005? We solved that case. Your report states the following. By coincidence, you encountered a serious incident in a town you visited while on vacation. You then decided to steal the right to investigate from the local law enforcement and took over the case. After several more homicides, you managed to apprehend okay. the perpetrator. So I'm guessing these are the events of the first game. And it's amusing that suddenly it's an... <laughs> like the whole... That was never that was never a problem in the first game. That he just decided he was going to start investigating uh, this, this serial killer on his own on vacation. So <laughs> it's funny now that they're, they came back and they're like, You can't just do that. We have laws. I thought the first game was in upstate New York. Yes. I thought it was West Coast. Yes. yes, that's exactly what happened. Or maybe he did it again. We stole the right to investigate from them. Just as you said. Yeah, I thought it was Washington. It all started when the body of a 16-year-old girl was discovered. You arrived in Lucare immediately after that, didn't you? It wouldn't be a knockoff, um... It wouldn't be a knockoff Twin Peaks if it were in upstate New York. We just can't seem to keep ourselves away from dead girls. Did you really visit that town just to take a vacation? Hey Grayson, thanks for the sub. Morgan goes on vacation all the time. Yeah. <laughs> he's always got his uh he's got his wine hat on, his uh his festive magnifying glass. We don't know. If you already have the report, then we suggest you read it, Bell. Either way, that case is closed. Closed? You sure about that? Don't you think this puzzle is still missing some crucial pieces? <laughs> Come on. No need to beat around the bush with us, Bell. Okay. The fictional rural American town of Greenvale, Washington. Okay. How's the sequel so far? I mean... Uh, I would say I haven't seen any gameplay yet. Haven't gotten into an open world if there is one. I actually know very little about this game, but I'd say the dialogue and writing and VO are 
are what I would like to see out of a sequel. He was oh, he was wrestling in there the whole time. They found Lee Clarkson's body. I will say there are some interesting it's another brief analysis thing. They do they're doing some interesting stuff with the directing of the audio and how they're busting out the lines. So, uh, I noticed that it was kind of interesting that uh, there would be like nonverbal action in between line breaks. So, you know, the um, York would like take a drag on his weed and then the line break would hit and then in the next line, the next cut, he'd exhale his his drag. So it's like it gives you the opportunity to, to match that timing. And also is putting context around what is normally just a two camera like talking headshot. I like that they were also rolling the audio of the guy wrestling around in the um, the bureau briefcase thing before they even showed it. Which is like cinematic techniques aren't that aren't often used in gameplay I guess because they most dialogue cutscenes are just straightforward. It was hidden deep within the Clarkson Food Delivery Services cold storage warehouse. I'm not saying that makes it better. It's just the use After of 14 implementation years, we finally discovered the body of the very first victim. Do you know what this means? That's why we're here. The first victim in the case he solved, Lise Clarkson. How do you Jay cut an FPS? And this is a photograph of what she looks like now. That's a good question. How will he react when he sees it? What? If, yeah. What if they J cut in a cutscene while you were playing, or is it L cut? Whichever one leads with audio. So like you could feel it coming, and then it would like blend into non-interactive stuff, and then like give you some kind of audio signal that gameplay is going to loop back up again, cutting to and from active gameplay. That'd be sick. The end of Metal Gear Solid Four tried some stuff with like multiple camera, <laughs> camera perspectives. Tried to use the full power. Full power of the PlayStation 3. That didn't go so well. You guys want to talk about frame rate issues? Holy crap. 13 did that a lot? Yeah, you're right. 13 did do that a lot. Yeah, 13, 13 was neat. They're doing a remaster of that, right? The body that went missing for 14 years was suddenly discovered frozen in a warehouse. Wolfenstein did it good? Yeah, that's true. That's Wolfenstein didn't have so much of like rigid cutscenes that would cut away from. It was all first person, but that's what made it good. It was like Half-Life style. This is some kind of message from the victim to us. I think like, I think I could probably play dense narrative FPS campaigns like Titanfall 2 and Wolfenstein like forever. Uh, I don't, I don't, they don't seem to be a particularly uh, profitable kind of game to make, but man, they're good. It'd be nice to have more of those. I guess we had Half-Life Alex. That one was pretty good. We're pleased that her body turned up. Deeply pleased. You claim to have closed this case, but now a lost body suddenly surfaced. Aren't you curious about the details? Body or not, we already solved that case. Want more Mass Effect style linear half-open world shooters? Would you say that, like, Ghost of Tsushima and Assassin's Creed is in that niche right now, or is that too open world? Lisa's body can't change anything now. Maybe Destiny is kind of where that went? Uh, guest account, and I'll be playing uh, Curse of the Moon 2 later, to do with us. if you're curious. I suspect I'm the body was stored game. there rather than abandoned, due to the unnatural state it was found in. She was found frozen in a storage unit. Therefore, she looks exactly the same as she did when she disappeared. In fact, she's in such good condition that we can even determine the murder weapon and cause of death. People just want the story style of mass? So just like... Dialogue trees? And cutscenes? I feel like cyberpunk is probably that. Probably? Maybe with a bit more payoff based on what you actually choose? Well... Or, um... Baldur's Gate 3, Divinity Original Sin, but the, that's kind of getting too into the RPG weeds, I feel like. Good for you. <laughs> Even stranger is how unbelievably beautiful she looks. At first glance, few would guess she was a murder victim at all. She looks more like a piece of art, or a mythological figure from a painting. This keeps getting better and better. Better and better? Isn't that right, my fairy? Oh my god. 
A corpse as beautiful as a goddess. Sounds just like our story. Hmm. <laughs> that went okay. Now I'm sure that Morgan's hiding something. Yeah, Aaliyah's view is really, really good. I may be able to get what I want if Simon's is pretty good too. Uh, some sometimes it's like a character reads real well because they're super evocative and they like they're they're memorable. So it's sometimes it's like how much of that is because of the writing? How much is the performance? How much is the the magic combo of this person's personality? So I guess in this circumstance, I could use a concentration to just see which one would go forward. So maybe like. Maybe there are like high tension investigation sequences where you don't have unlimited tries. Cause like, I'm like, why is this here again? A halfway fin. I think he was. If it was mere, but I know that every, especially now. You may be wondering why we decided to unearth all these old files. Everything happens for a reason. But there wasn't much we could actually investigate due to the damage caused by the hurricane. Uh, hey, Truffles King. Thanks for the raid. Is that what concentration is used for here? I have no idea. I'm trying to figure that out. To me, uh, it seems like concentration is a weird mechanic that... It, it just seems like it's... It just shows you the critical path at this point. It's like if you just really don't want to tab through dialogue and you just want to get back to wherever, you can concentrate your way through every possible interaction. Just to hit the one thing that'll move the, the dialogue forward. Uh, if they had more mechanics later, I could see it be more, being more complicated than that, but... Then we that seems like that's all it is right now. also questioned everyone who worked in the warehouse. Of course. We questioned all the Clarkson Food Delivery Services employees who staffed the warehouse and its owner. But we still have yet to obtain any key testimonies. Par for the course with a 14-year-old case, if you ask me. Yeah, this game came out today, so I guess some people had review copies or mm. something. Or Not early to access. mention how bad the timing was. Most of the employees were on vacation. So, you gave up on the investigation and came to see us instead. Yeah, I guess it unlocked it in other regions way earlier. Or you don't want to pick because the writing, yeah, is really good. That's a that's a actually a super valid Remember point. Remember what happened? But then, oh, like. Harry. Why would you make it expire, you know? Why only give limited uses? Because at some point, somebody who wants to hear all the dialogue just may not be get the chance to because they ran out of concentration points? That's a silly thing to like. I don't know, it doesn't quite make sense. Kazakame, uh, thank you for the Prime sub. Badger of Doom, thanks for the Prime. It's gone for a while and you're still in here with Seen Hall Zach, yeah. He's not that senile, he's just house. high off his ass. That man. So incoherent. Yeah, there's, there's gotta be other uses for Such it. Such a pain. Hey, are you talking about the guy who managed the vault where Lisa's body was found? Yeah, I think he started working there in 2005. Remember, Aaliyah? You said he was a pain to deal with, too. Large man, yes. Hmm. No need to answer. If you don't want to. I'm sure you've already put him under surveillance. Textbook FBI protocol. So. Okay, so I'm guessing then why would I why would I do the chess game again though? Who is it? This my fairy character you keep speaking to. You can't see her. Such bad manners. You barge into our apartment, yet you don't even care about who else is living here. Dissociative Identity Disorder. In the past, it was known as Multiple Personality Disorder. You were subjected to an internal probe only once during your career, correct? They suspected that you had DID, but you denied it, and no problems arose during your test. Is this how you dealt with the psychological profiler back then, too? Saying strange things, weaving unrelated matters together. This is so wild. One of the cornerstones, I, I've always been fascinated by the cornerstone of, like, Twin Peaks storytelling, is that no one thinks it's weird. 
in the world. Um, and that was, that seemed to be the case in like Deadly Premonition, but now we have like somebody rooted in normal human logic saying, the way that you investigate a case is doesn't actually make any sense. So it's weird to have that grounding in something like this. Is that how you slipped through? You're free to draw your own conclusions, Bell. Yeah, he looks messed up. Ugh, ground up hard. But my fairy clearly exists. She's been sitting right there on your lap this entire time. <laughs> hey, stop it. No violence allowed in here, Bell. Wouldn't want to scare my fairy, now would we? Isn't there someone else you should have talked to before coming to us? Such as... We were unable to reach Patricia Clarkson. You look surprised. I thought you already knew. After all, you visited Louisiana last week. We assumed you met with her during your time there. We haven't been to Louisiana. Not in 14 years. Is that so? We've been right here in our apartment this entire time. That man is our witness, aren't you, Simon? <laughs> He's right. He didn't even take a single step outside on Christmas Eve. Which means that I didn't get to either. Are you positive about that? I took the liberty of checking some airline records. Last Friday, the name Billy Bishop was listed on a morning flight out of Boston. This is the fake name you used to use as an agent, isn't it? <laughs> a mere coincidence. Yet that's not all. That evening on the same day, a man with a large scar on his forehead allegedly purchased an 89 Cadillac from a small used car lot in Lucare. He reportedly said he wanted something old, big, and strong. The owner of the car lot felt it was a strange order, so it stuck in his mind. Our world is filled with mysteries. And they always have the most bizarre timing. <laughs> Incidentally, on the following day, an identical Cadillac was taken to a scrapyard in Trenton. Trenton, New Jersey. You can find that type of car anywhere. Isn't that right, my fairy? <laughs> Morgan's right. Everything happens for a reason. Even this messy room. There must be a reason for it. Especially when it comes to those strangely tidy spots. <laughs> They're practically begging me to question them. So let's see. Yeah, okay. Strangely clean spot, of course. Holly MVA supplements and a home IV kit. It's probably filled with highly concentrated vitamin C. He said that being on the verge of death is intriguing. But then why does he have such an elaborate home medical care setup? So, yeah, I'm just at this point, I'm trying to validate my theory that the highlighted thing is just the thing that progresses dialogue. How does he truly feel? That is a thing that's been happening with, with games lately, though, is, is using some kind of visual code or, or mark to tell you what the, like, critic, like, the imperative dialogue is, so you can choose to pick side dialogue if you want. It's pretty nice. Do you like fresh vegetable juice? Why would you think that? There's a juicer in your sink that hasn't been washed yet. And do I smell the faint fragrance of baked beans? He's been thinking about there was beans. You didn't use much salt, did you? What are you implying? You just told me that you find impending death to be intriguing. That confused me. When I look around your room, all I can see are the many ways in which you're resisting death. Poly MVA treatment. Highly concentrated vitamin C IVs. Fresh vegetable juice. Vegetable protein without salt. Gallons of vitamin D milk for fat and calcium. Taped and duct taped into a square. I've been looking at that, being like, what the hell is that? 
I'm just gonna have to roll with the, the fact that he fucking squares up his milk cartons. Okay, at least somebody, <laughs> at least somebody called it out. Damn. The ambivalence, yes. What? Two contradictory emotions, mixing, coexisting together. An adult, mature mind is never satisfied with only one response. It's common sense. Isn't that right, my fairy? <laughs> that is not dark laughter. DVDs are those all DVDs. over the place. I know that he's a shut-in, but this still seems like way too many for one person. And I've never heard of any of these titles before. A stinking indulgence. And a massive DVD collection. She has got to let this go. You must live a very comfortable life. It's like... Emaciating from cancer. Yeah, my life rules, thanks. Retired in your Jeez. 40s. I'm envious. But who doesn't love movies, Belle? I'm not a fan. Oh, that won't do. You should dedicate all the free time you have to watching movies. It's practically an unwritten law. Films guide us. He's 40? No, he retired at 40. Uh, we don't know how long he's been retired. Films are filled with every important life lesson there is. Is that so? For example, they live. Oh, here we go. Now we're getting into it. Yes. Yes. Man. What is it about, like... There's, there's just a certain class of, like, weird game... It's self-referential, but then also is steeped in like 80s pop mo or 80s cult movies. 1988, directed by John Carpenter. That film taught us a valuable lesson. Always put on your sunglasses before a fight. You know, you got a point. This game takes place three days after the first. Are you? <laughs> I can't tell if that's true or not. I actually. That might actually be true. And yeah, here we go. Simon's talking again. Movies teach us about everything we need to know. I learned about the right way to eat frozen pizza from Cobra. It's one of Stallone's best films. Weird, another 80s cult movie. I guess that's not really cult. He's going to talk about how he cuts the slice up with a pair of scissors. Because he's me. Before that, I wouldn't be caught dead trying to eat frozen pizza. I thought it wasn't fit for human consumption. But that film changed my life. Simon, that has nothing to do with the film. You're just talking about pizza. Damn, Simon's getting dunked. Wow. This room's a total mess. But certain spots look perfectly clean. Is it just a coincidence? Yes. Mm. No. There are no coincidences with this man. He got immolated. I don't know, maybe he just sits around all day watching movies too. Well... That would make sense, right? Mr. Morgan. I found several spots in this room that look strangely clean. Did you tidy up a bit because you knew we were coming? Those are... Sanctuaries. They've existed from the start. Sanctuaries. That's right. Sacred places. Pizza places. Hovels for pure souls, if you will. Were there originally objects in those hovels? Something you didn't want us to see? The soul's still there. We haven't touched a thing. But we know you can't see anything. Hey, Simon. Don't touch the sanctuary. Uh, s sorry. <coughs> That's a sanctuary. <laughs> Don't ever touch it again. You've been watching us for four and a half years, and you couldn't even figure that much out. Uh, my bad. Damn it, Simon. It's my first time actually coming inside, you know. <laughs> 
One, his jaw locks shut. Two, his hands look way too small. You're earning far more than you deserve, then. Wow. What were you doing all day in that black suburban? Watching... Watching Cobra? We thought wiretapping was your specialty. Don't tell me. Crossword puzzles. What do you think, my fairy? Four and a half years. All that time, and what does he have to show for it? Crossword puzzles? No way. Oh no, he's gonna like... How can he possibly make this worse? Anime? Reads manga. Come on! I thought you knew. He's really I'm into Sudoku Warhammer? Guy. Oh, okay. Well. Agent Jones. Oh, right. He's completely taken control of the conversation. At this rate, we'll never get anywhere. I need to press him some more. I'm going to look at rummaging Simon. Agent Jones. The briefcase isn't even that big. How long does he intend to keep that up? Does he have pizza menus stuffed inside there or something? Like, the briefcase isn't even that big. How is he still looking for something? Just imagine staring at your partner. Eyes getting bloodshot as they're just rummaging around for ten minutes straight in a small bag. He's trying to find his self-respect. Ouch! Oh, Simon. It's not your day. It's okay. We don't all we don't all have days, you know. They're not all ours. Agent Jones, did you find the files? There, no problem. Okay, Greenvale. Mr. Yeah. Morgan, do you recognize these files? Ooh. Whoa! Ow! We told you. That's a sanctuary. <clears throat> Let him go! Assaulting an FBI agent is an obstruction of you. justice. We told you. Go! No! Stay back! Stay back! Sanctuary! Down! Stay back! Ah! Ah! Man. Imagine having a high senile dude just writhing on you, screaming in your ear. I cut my finger with that can opener this morning. I thought I stopped the bleeding, but it seeped through. How could I be so stupid? Everything should be fine now. I'm sorry for being so careless. I think, uh, I think York freaks out around blood, right? I made sure to read through your file and learn about your condition. The color red. Oh, Such red, a that's right. Thing to fear. Please, accept my deepest apologies. I, I'm sorry too, Morgan. You guys fucked his whole day. You put your hand in his sanctuary. And you come in here with the color red for no reason. I don't know what I was thinking. I'll never touch one of your sanctuaries ever again. And no more red, either. <laughs> don't ever touch one again. I mean, we'll absolutely touch another sanctuary. <laughs> yeah. I'm gonna say like 20 minutes. Now, may we return to our discussion? He's gonna get up to use the restroom and he'll end up peeing on a sanctuary somehow. I'll keep them away from us. Strangely enough, this man has a fear of the color red. And I believe that fear is connected to the Greenville case. Because I remember the seeds and the tree. And it was like some, some womb shit mixed in there. 
The files on the serial killings that shocked Washington State in 2010, officially titled the Greenvale case. I never thought I'd take out files from a case I first heard about on the news. Here's another empty space. What does the word sanctuary really mean to him? Hovels for pure souls? Soon after Agent Jones started monitoring him, he was ordered to go through Morgan's trash, but he didn't find anything. Morgan used this machine to cut up everything, from his mail to his supermarket receipts. Then he even went as far as taking out his trash in parts. Nice. So let's see, what if I give this the old, the old eye? Okay, well, now I know that that one's gonna move things forward. So, I guess Could the fact you that you can only what exactly the word sanctuary means to you. They'll. It seems like they're splitting up dialogue options by camera angle, and you can only like concentrate on one camera angle at a time. So that's one way that the use of that is somewhat interesting. Is you can't look at them all with one use. So. Sanctuaries. <laughs> Sanctuaries. Weapon, you are pretty. Thank you for the prime sub. Nothing more and nothing less. That doesn't explain anything. Why do you wish to know? Just curious. Bell. You're a much ruder person than you initially seem to be. Don't you agree, my fairy? What do our sanctuaries have to do with the investigation? If you're out of questions, then how about just going home? Hey, mind if I jump in here? A bit, yeah. <laughs> what is it, Simon? Is that look? We hope you've got a real question for us. Well, actually, I'm also a little curious myself. No one's supposed to touch any sanctuary, right? That's what we said. What about you, though? You can't even touch them yourself? Are there any extenuating circumstances? What are you getting at? I mean, I doubt if any of this really matters, but... Uh, Dathomiri Witch. Thanks for the, thanks for the resub. If no one can touch the sanctuaries, then... How do you clean them? Simon, you idiot. <laughs> the long pause. No one even know, man. We're just gonna leave him hanging from now on. This is a very large shredder. That's that's full on done. Yeah, no answer. Is there something you don't want people finding out about? Hmm. Good question. But we never know when some curious civil servants may come and sift through our trash. Now, do we? You're already retired. What are you so worried about? <laughs> It's just a simple habit from back when we were still on duty. Didn't they bang that into your head when you were up in Quantico? Some habits are hard to break, no matter how hard you try. All right. The files on the serial oh, okay. Mr. Morgan, I'd like to ask you some questions about this case now. We don't want to remember that town. I'm sorry, but there's no way around this. I remember hearing about this case on the news when I was still a student. A high school girl named Anna Graham was murdered and the FBI stepped in to take over the case. I also remember it becoming a sprawled investigation due to evidence found in the victim's throat. Is that correct? After that case, you went on sick leave for two years. And when you returned, you requested to be switched over to desk work. All right, now we're getting some, now we're getting some plot. Now the lore's fallen on it in place. What happened? That's a private matter. None of your business, Bill. Were you traumatized? Hmm. It's a common problem with prolific agents such as yourself. But there's another possibility that may make more sense. Perhaps you simply finished making preparations. What are you getting at? Thinking too much about something will always turn it into a problem. The Greenvale case. Don't you think it resembles the Luke Carre case? Read the report. 
we have nothing else to say. I just need one more push. Do you? One more thing that can summon up the past. I gotta admit, I feel like we're not... We're not close to tilting him. So this is interesting. Okay, so now I am out of... Yeah, it's so strange. I'm out of concentration, so I just have to kind of gamble. A jar of honey with honeycomb inside it. There's nothing strange about it, but... But, like, losing just means I, me a I miss a side conversation. Looks like another old antique. He collects milk cartons, but treats valuable antiques like trash. What's going on in his head? A picture of a leaf. This isn't just a picture of any leaf. It's the most important leaf. The belief in truth begins with the doubt of all truths in which one has previously believed. It's time to get down to business. That's royal jelly. Huh? You were staring at the jar, weren't you? Do you find it strange that there's honeycomb inside? We wanted to harvest royal jelly in its most natural state. Oh, JC, you got the Queen's main food source created from the worker bee's secretions. You got uh you got bonked off a lift because your insurance wasn't? Hmm, okay. Well hopefully you can just buy more insurance and then get reinstated, right? It's a perfect food. Filled with power. Meant to fuel the birth of the next queen. By absorbing it into our own bodies, we too can acquire that power. That makes total sense. Yep. Incidentally, did you know that all the worker bees are female? No. Nice. Guess they didn't teach you that at Quantico. No, you know what? It didn't come up. Somehow, at Quantico, just didn't ever talk about bee culture. Male bees are only born to inseminate. Hell yeah. And they're, they have short Oops. lives and don't even get stingers. Hell yeah. Sort of feels like a glimpse into the future of our society, wouldn't you agree? Women are gifted with the power to conceive, give birth, and nourish their children. But men... Men are consumed with the job of providing women with the chance to do so. Not where I would have gone with that, but alright. If women no longer had to rely on men for the seeds of life, they would soon cease to desire them, we believe. Nah, come on. Dude's got abs though, huh? And butts. Dude's got some juicy butts. Be careful, Simon. <laughs> huh? Of what? That was a pretty good cut, though. I do kind of like the idea that, um... Yeah, as, uh, as, as systemic misogyny breaks down, dude's got to generally up their game to not get a free pass anymore. So he's like, Simon, you're going to have to work a little hard if you want to get laid, my boy. Your my dudes. already stolen the reins from you. My man. We do start wars, though. That's true. <laughs> if we kick all the dudes out of power, what, when are we going to have any fun wars, you know? What about all the companies who profit off of war? Think about it. What are they gonna do? <laughs> Tell me about that trash. The silver clock in that trash pile. Is that an H5? That's right. John Harrison's fifth chronometer. What I meant, but sure. Oh. Completed in 1770. Wait. Now I don't know what I missed. Whatever, I'm gonna roll with it. After many years, he completed it and presented it to the Board of Longitude in order to end their feud with him. That's only a replica, of course. You like clocks? Clocks are amazing. Prime fruit of the human race's intellect, we took the invisible idea of time and manifested it in these. Yeah, I love clocks, too. Absolutely fascinating. I disagree. Oh? Why? Time is valuable precisely because it can't be seen. Yet nowadays, people can't tell what time it is unless it's measured in numbers. Talk about idiocy. I don't mean to side with the Board of Longitude, but remember, humans used to cross oceans with the stars alone. We have our eyes to read moon charts and study the sky. We don't need clocks. 
What if it's cloudy or storming? All you need is courage and a love for adventure. I would not have put her on that, on the side of courage and adventure, but here we are. Also, why are they talking about this? Because <laughs> oh, I brought up clocks. Hear that, my fairy? Courage and a love for adventure? <laughs> I tell time by looking directly at the sun. <laughs> Come on, Belle. Surely you know how many lives have been claimed by your pal's courage and adventure. Zing? <sighs> hey, hey, hold on a second here. Yeah, let's hear from that Simon. Board of Longitude thing. What the heck is that? I mean, I've heard of it before. I'm an FBI analyst, remember? I yep. just sort of can't remember it right now. I know what it is, really. I'm telling the truth. Come on, Aaliyah, back me up here. Aaliyah? Mr. Morgan, please look at this. Oh, no. What did we just say? We don't want to remember Greenvale. This isn't a photo from Greenvale. Look closely at it. Former Special Agent Francis Zack Morgan. This photograph predates Greenvale. It's from the Lucare case you worked on in 2005. Red, red tree, red tree. Yes, a red tree. Greenvale wasn't the first place you saw one of these. The Greenvale case and the Lee Clarkson murder case, they're connected by these red trees, aren't they? Red trees. Answer me, what are these trees? Red trees. I want the truth. Tell me everything you know. <laughs> the red trees. You really did your homework. Well done, Belle. You're good. Damn good. Mm. Are you ready to talk now? I want to know what went down in Lucare in 2005. Fine. We'll tell you. There's that guitar I was waiting for. Ah. Oh, that's delightful. We'll tell you what happened in that town. Yes. Trumpet? Yeah, Comfy, I'm, I'm pausing on the dialogue just to take in the music. I'm changing the settings in a game about golfing. Yeah, it, it is kind of pastoral, isn't it? Yeah. Just imagine these verdant, verdant greens and stuff like that. It was that red tree. That red tree ruined my life. Oh, yeah. Musashi, I did the same thing. Like, at the end of every episode of Alan Wake, waiting for the song to finish. Or in uh, Quantum Break. Yeah, I would listen to the whole thing, too. It was... <sighs> it was a sultry summer day. The sun comes down hard on you in the south, like a torrential downpour of demonic whispers. It all started back in that sweltering summer. We still had our best friend with us back then. The other me. <laughs> my 
better half. So th this is a prequel? The events of this took place before Deadly Premonition 1, I think? Oh shit, alright. Time for Max Gamer Time. Never a choice When somebody needs you You can't turn away You're their only lifeline Just a hero A bullet for hire Working alone Always a voice A cry in the darkness An echo of pain that's been long forgotten, but it haunts me, my destiny, to be alone. There's a time when you see life for what it's got to be. Call to me to keep searching, walk alone. Damn, that was cool as hell. I was not expecting anything like that. It's like maybe if I'm, yeah, I was like the music, the the mood. That was pretty good, but shit, man, that went places. See, I don't know, man, like, I, I can't speak to it yet because I know that like the FPS has gotten down to five. I saw like the, the, the performance report on Zach. it, but that's not why you play this game so that makes sense though that's how they can have yeah that's how they can have york back and basically have the character from deadly premonition can one you hear me zach yeah is that the same voice actor there you are zach <laughs> Sleeping again? That really sounds like the same voice. Oh, it is the same voice? Jeff Kramer? Uh -huh. That's amazing. Uh, I didn't expect that that would affect me like it has. Uh. Oh, you think it's different? Rise oh. and shine. It's time for us to head back out into the chaos. He definitely has, like, the vibe. If it's not the same person, they're nailing it. Isn't that right, Zach? That's interesting. I, uh, that's right. I always assumed that uh, in Deadly Premonition 1, Zach was the player. Especially since York would literally turn and face the camera and talk to Zach. So I thought that was just like their weird self-awareness thing. But yeah, I guess it was actually, there was more lore behind it than I thought or remembered. In a sense, Zach was the player. That's true. Oh. That wasn't really even an acronym, but... Hey, what's up, Cyberglob? Tell me about this coffee, York. Zach, it looks like she wants us to join her for breakfast. Perhaps this town's finally starting to warm up to us. Hmm. 
<laughs> Stupid. He's like even younger and smilier. She's welcoming us with open arms. She's even willing to share that tasty morsel with us. What an honor. Same voice actor? Okay. That's awesome. Hurry up and chow down, mister. Unless you like your breakfast stale. What an amazing place. I've been on top of the moon since the moment I got here. Look at how and happy and cancer free he looks. Town, yeah. Macari. Sounds like French to me. But what does it mean? I'm the chef, David. If you want to know about the town, you'd better ask the concierge. Only amateur chefs flap their gums about stuff that ain't food related. I like the cut of your jib, David. David Jawara is the chef here at the... I feel like there Did should be a voiceover. Zach? He's a true professional. You say something, mister? Uh, no, not to you. I was just talking to Zach. Zach? Please don't ask me about Zach. It's a private matter. If you say so, still. Never thought the FBI would ever come out to a little old town like ours. I do work for the FBI, but I didn't come here for an investigation. I just happened to stop by on my way to New Orleans. He's so broad. <sighs> Never thought there'd be a murder out here either. And it was a 16-year-old kid. Now I tell you, this country seen better days. What you reckon, mister? Zach, he's definitely a professional, but it seems like he's also a bit lonesome. That's good. Ambivalence exists everywhere. Folks say the killer used an axe. Hell of an old-fashioned choice, if you ask me. I thought chefs didn't talk about... Oh, I guess technically Actually, that could Chef be Actually, Chef David, if you don't mind, I'd like to ask you a few questions about the incident. But shoot, I ain't the one y'all to be asking Mr. FBI. I only heard what I heard. But seeing as you're fixing to grill me, I can tell you what I know. Please do. I appreciate it. Ooh. You said the victim was a 16-year-old. Did you know her? Well, sure. I reckon the whole town did. Meaning? She's Lise Clarkson, the little grandbaby of the Clarkson family. The Clarkson family? That's right. You ain't seen they sign on your way in here? The one above that huge coal storage complex. Should have had a dragonfly on it. Anyway, that's the Clarkson family seat. They own most of the land around here. From the sugar mm. plantations right down to the food processing plant. It is a particular cozy feeling when some lines are inexplicably quieter than others. That's old old JRPG VO vibes. Yeah, I reckon they got a stake in just about everything. They even own the water tower on the edge of town, you know? Oh, you're a little sick, but you think it's just a bad food? Constable, I, I kind of had the same thing. I took a big old, big old gulp of bad milk this morning, and I think it's sitting heavy in my stomach, but... I think it's it's not so bad. It's not getting worse, at least, so. You're York, where you're Zach. You're right, oh my god. Because I'm just stopping what I'm doing and talking to a ghost. <laughs> They're the ones who built up this town, and they still support it. There's an axe in the background. You're right. Just right there. Easily grabbable. Uh, I ate some amazing burgers today. Ah, oh, man. I gotta eat something, actually. Speaking of which, I actually have to use the restroom, and I probably get a. I'll eat an egg. Gotta be on that diet. All right, I'll be back in a second, guys. Quick break time. Wow, you guys! I gotta admit, for the first time ever, I can hear the switch fan spinning. It's actually having to, to blow some air in there. It's interesting. What do you know about the Clarkson's house? Anyway, I apologize about the extended delay there. Um, I ate an egg, and I ate some farro, and I talked to Stephanie for a little bit. Now, I ain't got nothing bad to say, but I'm gonna talk straight to you. You best steer clear of that place. That family ain't just some gang. They're a whole different kind of beast. 
They folks with real power. Remnants of the good old boys who shaped America in the early days. Especially the head of the family, P.J. Clarkson. He's the kind of monster who goes around eating other monsters. And I'm sure he's on edge now with his granddaughter getting murdered and all. So don't go barging in with that shiny FBI badge of yours and think you'll be safe for nothing. Things are different down here. So if you plan on sticking around, you best remember that. I see. I'll keep that in mind. Is the local law enforcement investigating the case? Hey, Regs. Thanks for the prime sub. <laughs> Shoot, mister. What you think? Now, I told you this ain't no city. Please show egg. We it's in my stomach. Five boondogs here. Feels good. They got the know-how to break up fights and keep folks from killing each other when they piss you off. They sit down and talk it out with you heart to heart. And when that don't work, they just beat your ass. That's the deep south for you. <clears throat> Why are we York again? Because we flashed back into the far-flung past of 2005. This murder ain't like that, though. A little kid got killed. So I guess we don't have any iPhones yet, but iPods are blowing up. A weird way. Like something on a TV show. The Sheriff's Department ain't never seen nothing like this. Ooh, Spood. Thanks for gifting five subs. Very much appreciate that. Uh, track palette, or track pattern? Yeah, I guess you got gifted a sub. Had some very generous people in chat lately. Like the aforementioned Spood, so thank you. Can't believe this game finally came out. I know, what a glorious day. Live and let die, Angel Heart, and the Pelican Brief, right? Nine out of ten people will name those titles when you ask them to think of a film set in New Orleans. Live and let die, you Philistine. They're all excellent movies, but to me they lack realism. Due to my line of work, I have a tendency to think deeply about what feels real and what doesn't. What's your point? Cat people. That's my point. Cat people. That was in the background and in his apartment. 1982, directed by Paul Schrader. The crowning achievement of Nastasia Kinski, the ultimate muse of the 80s. The most vital element of that movie is the reality it depicts. Leopards who turn into humans have intercourse with humans and turn back into leopards. Then they can only turn back into humans again if they mutilate their lovers. No love for Bad Lieutenant. I only saw the uh, the Nick Cage remake of that, which was a ride. I was, was indeed a ride. <laughs> by the sheer reality of it all. The reality. Mm -hmm. Understand? I'm ta After watching Oops. it, I felt like I just had to experience the world of cat people for myself. That's why I decided to visit New Orleans. Uh, okay. Yeah, David, you can just... If you back off slowly at this point, no one's gonna blame Another you. Another vital element of cat people is the presence of Malcolm McDowell. Hey, do love me some Malcolm McDowell, though. Master Chief and 420 Blunt Ninja. Thank you for the four-month resub. Monthly transaction in order to continue this parasocial relationship. Welcome in. Welcome to my uh, inner cloister of very close personal friends. I exchange US dollar for friendship. Our transaction has been completed. Thank you very much. Malcolm McDowell from Blue Thunder. Oh, talk about a masterpiece. Listen carefully, David. Only an amateur would call A Clockwork Orange his best movie. His best movies are Cat People and Blue Thunder. Wing Commander 3. Period. <laughs> wow. You need to remember this because it's the truth. York's getting, uh... York's getting bent out of shape mm, here. Whatever you say, mister. There you go. So, uh, what's your point again? Never mind, don't worry about it. I already covered all the important parts. When you say it was like something from a TV show, what exactly do you mean? Hey, mister. Why do you look so excited, huh? Like a kid asking grandma to read him a fairy tale. I just can't seem to keep myself away from young women who died in bizarre ways. Oh. Well, I ain't seen it with my own eyes. But folks say they found the body hanging under a bridge on the bayou. And under that bridge, there was some kind of altar. An altar? Like something they use in black magic. Something horrible. Voodoo? Nah, wasn't nothing like that. Just a weird <laughs> altar. Don't be stupid. Nothing weird like voodoo. Just a sacrificial altar. That's all? Oh, and... 
body was all cut up in pieces, scattered around the altar like. <clears throat> Shadow, thanks for the prime. So she was sacrificed. He sounds kind of like Chris Hansen, Anon. I never thought about that, but he kind of does. Yeah, I agree. I can hear it. That's what the fella who discovered us said, yeah. Bingo, Zack. This case has got our names all over it. By the way, Mr. FBI, I ain't seen a car in the parking lot. <laughs> to shreds, you say? <laughs> How'd you get all the way out here, huh? Don't tell me you walked. Well, that's a very good question. Chef David... You've got a sharp eye. It's true that I didn't park my car in your parking lot. Do you know why? Can't say I do. Because it was stolen. Huh? But you with the FBI, right? Even FBI cars can be stolen. It could happen after you park your car on the side of the road and go off to do some legwork. I hope he spends the next 20 minutes describing various scenarios in which an FBI car might be stolen, just to make sure that none of this is weird. When you're eating lunch, when there we you're go. watching a movie, when you're asleep at night. Good for you, York. When you're buying cigarettes at the local supermarket. That's a lot of situations in which a car could be taken, yes. Your car can be stolen anywhere. Mm -hmm. That's precisely what it means to be an FBI agent. Is that what it means? <laughs> That's the one thing. <laughs> Listen, when, <laughs> when we joined the FBI, we knew that our lifestyle meant our cars could be stolen at any moment. That's just what it means. That's that's the risk we all take, but we take it gladly for our country. In my case, my car was stolen while I was on my way down here, but no need to worry. I already reported it to the local authorities. And I've also already acquired another mode of transportation. Another mode? He's gonna point to his shoes, isn't he? Wanna hear the details? Not really, but I'll listen if you want me to. <laughs> I, I wish, sometimes I wish I could be as direct and honest like that, but say it in a way where no one can possibly get mad, you know? Or if somebody's like asking me about something, I'm like, not really, but I'll listen. And like, have that actually I don't know, go over okay? Because sometimes that's what I, that's what I mean. It's like, I'll listen to you say it. I got nothing but, I got nothing else going on, but I gotta be honest, I don't care. <laughs> That's so many conversations I have where I'm like, you know what? I'm enjoying listening to this. I'm also not terrifically invested. Uh, PK Onet. Thank you. Thank you for the five gifts, man. Why did we flash back? Because the, the game opened on a future York, uh, or a future Zach. <clears throat> Wait, who's not doing so hot? Two other, uh, an FBI agent joins the other agent that was monitoring him. Uh, to question him about this case, which happened before the other case. Uh, because of the connections between the two that point to some larger narrative that we don't know yet. Was it Zack or York? It was Zack. And the future. It is York now because this happens before Deadly Premonition 1. Then please do. At least that's my understanding, which I could be off of on. But... After I finished my work in Houston, I flew to New Orleans. Then, I rented a car at the airport. Whenever I visit the West Coast, I always rent a convertible especially in California. But now I'm in hot and sticky Louisiana. So I decided on a brand new hybrid car with a fully equipped air conditioning system. Holy bones. Thanks for the prime sub. A hybrid car. Oh yes, they're marvelous. Vehicles that utterly defy everything you think you know about cars. Now, in the year 2005, it feels like we finally entered the 21st century. Stomp down on the gas all you want. The engine won't make a sound. It's silent? At first, I felt like the landscape was moving past me on its own. Give it a few more years, and I'm sure we'll start seeing cars that run purely on electricity. And who knows? In a decade or so, electric sports cars may end up lining the parking lots of Silicon Valley. I can see it now. It's the world of The Last Starfighter. 1984, directed by Nick Castle. It's famous for being the first film to utilize realistic CG, but I couldn't care less about that. See, I was mesmerized by the beautifully refined mech designs. It even made me wish that I could be one of them myself, especially the Gunstar spacecraft. No other sci-fi movie has ever had. So, uh, yeah, where'd your hybrid car get stolen? It is weird to have characters that actually react to York like he's a giant weirdo. 
Sorry, I got off topic. Yes, you did. I noticed it was missing after I finished my lunch and walked out of the diner. Incidentally, this diner was located at the entrance to a small town just south off the I-10. I went out to get back in it, but my hybrid car was nowhere to be found. I remembered exactly where I parked it, right between a blue pickup truck and a hedgerow. But when I came back from lunch, it had completely vanished. In short, someone stole it, and in its place, they left me this. What? A skateboard. A skateboard? Yes. While I was sliding my lunch into my stomach, someone was busy replacing my brand new hybrid car with a wooden board attached to four wheels. Remarkable, don't you think? So then how did you get here? By riding the skateboard, obviously. Why do you look so surprised? We're like 250 miles? <laughs> no, I couldn't ride the board very well at first. But by the time I hit the three mile mark, I'd more or less gotten the hang of it. Tony York's pro skater? By the 10 mile mark, oh my God. I'd even learned to do a few tricks. <laughs> <laughs> Left with nothing but a skateboard, Francis York Morgan learns how to do an ollie across the America. journey of self-discovery. Very radical, yeah. Not sure. even I knew I had this latent talent sleeping inside me. This summer's gonna be another hot one. It's supposed to get over 95 today. That camera transition was a hell of a thing. Watch out, you don't go getting heat stroke. The least Clarks in case needs us. Don't you think so, Zach? The cat people are what guided us to New Orleans. We should be thanking Malcolm McDowell. <laughs> Once we get home, let's watch Blue Thunder again. I'm already looking forward to it. Aren't you, Zack? Zack, the searing light. Mmm, these scents. It's the deep south. Mmm, that was a fabulous breakfast. You're the world's greatest chef. Uh, wait, mister. You didn't take a single bite. Well, the tea was to die for, but I'd prefer coffee next time. What would a morning be without coffee? Sir Necklace, thank you for the prime sub. What is even happening? Uh, in the back of my mind, it's just Sonic 06 looks like this. Imagine Sonic 06, but it's pure dialogue. That would be amazing. Hell yeah, here we go. Here comes gameplay. Here we go. Yeah, we got camera controls. We got stick controls. I'm choosing what we're looking at and how we're doing it. All right, all right. That's some pretty dodgy ambient occlusion, but that's okay. We got shadows, we got, we got menus. Plus allows you to enter the red room. Inside you have journal, inventory, map, config, title screen, album. Check your third with Lee albums. Guidebook, data, and link board. All right. Cold be gone. That's right, you get sick. Forgot about that. Non-lethal bullets for Mr. Alligator. I'll pass his time with cigarettes. He's out to sleep. Oh yeah, you, there's like a tiredness gauge and you have to eat food and stuff. York's beloved ride. It's definitely faster than walking, that's for sure. I guess that's true. Or not. Uh, Paul Moore, can you can you explain to me the what's with the just the downright mean nature that people are attacking this game's visuals for? It's an indie game. It's an indie game. It's an indie game. I it, it just it doesn't something feels very wrong about the way people are. It really is just kind of picking on this game. 
I don't get it. I don't get it. And why this game? Everyone wants to point and laugh at it. I'm not sure why. Any games enough to be crusty and run at 5 FPS? Just don't. Sure. Everyone's a critic, I guess. It's really not that bad. This is not 5. I know it gets down to 5, but it, people are doing that fucking thing where they take the worst possible scenario and then they say the entire game's that and then they point and laugh because they want to feel bigger than something for a little bit. Like, come on. This is playable. And guess what? There's a lot of trash out there that isn't, so... Just, people are holding it to standards it's not even trying to hold itself to. I don't get it. And also, why, like, why do you feel the need to take this game down a peg? Just some good-natured ribbing? I guess. <sighs> what I see is, I see stuff that's not not so good-natured. A lot of streamers like 10 to 15 FPS in open world. Yeah. I think the original, I mean, no, the original game was like maybe low, low 20s. like this is did anyone did anyone play deadly premonition one which is fine but a ton of indies out there don't have aliasing this bad yeah but they're not all trying to be what this is like that's just such a silly 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 statement why would you would you go to an indie movie and be like other indie movies don't look like this 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 mo indie movie's trash an independent movie producer would clearly be able to make an indie movie like this, because these other indie movies have these things. It's just the, the most nonsensical... ...common, I guess. Was the first game dealing with these technical issues? Yeah, it did not run super well. It certainly wasn't like a tech showcase. Um, and it was big and empty and awkward and... There were tons of quality of life issues. It was a really jankety game. Yeah, that's kind of 360 level graphics, but who cares? Yeah, who cares? Yeah, it's about the story and the weirdness. Thank you, Endo. So. I guess I get good-natured ribbing, but man. It just seems like it's become the latest thing. Everybody, everybody's like, ha ha ha, it runs bad. I'm like, oh. I guess. Plenty of games run bad. And spend an hour getting crafting materials at 5 p FPS. Okay, I mean, I'll be willing to change my mind. Um, if it's if it's voraciously bad, but again, I got through the original just fine, and that game did not run very well. Happy Fuzz, thanks for gifting out a grip of subs there. But yeah, I don't know. Like I, like I said. It's it's the fact that people are people are coming into chat being like five FPS, five FPS. And it hasn't even gotten there in the game yet. I've been enjoying it for an hour and a half. Chasing it all over. So it's it's becoming that thing where everyone feels like they have a target they can dunk on. But I feel like we're finally on the verge of finding something now. It's just Don't funny that it runs just as bad ten years later. I don't, I don't see what's funny about that. Like, is there supposed- is there some assumption that everything's supposed to get... Like, everything- I think it's about time With the passage of time... Movies. Things will just automatically all run at 60 FPS, 1080p? People still have to make that. And yes, if it's I know this one same team, memories. same budget, why would you suddenly Seems expect from technical- Tucson. Like a technical product that's and so much higher. Stains from Miami. Ah, uh, Miami. Now that was a fascinating case. Billy, our perp, cut his own torso right in two. Even with the help of the drugs, a feat like that still requires incredible mental fortitude. I was so impressed that I forgot I'd left my briefcase on the floor. Mm. The same floor his blood gushed out onto. That does kind of indicate they didn't learn much from making the first game.
Hmm. I think I can understand that. I know, Zach. I know. Now isn't the I time. I can understand that mindset, I think. Oh, that. So, bro, dude, it, nobody's trolling. I'm just trying to. I guess just trying to, to call out that I. There's some. I don't appreciate dogpiling negativity. An emergent drug that's been on the rise in four southern states. Especially on a game that's trying to do something original. Like, if there were a. Call of Duty clone that ran like this. You know what? Dunk away. There was no other attempt there, and they couldn't even get the one thing right. Personally, I think it originated right here in Louisiana. And these Clarkson's murder must be connected to it somehow. So to me, like, bagging on this game for performance issues when it's clearly trying to do something original. You may not have to like it, but at least it's doing something original. I don't know, that's like that's like making fun of somebody just because they look bad, you know? They might be trying to do something good, but you're like, oh, you're, you're ugly. I'm like, that's a little superficial, don't you think? The 16-year-old girl who was murdered, her body was found beneath a bridge over the bayou. But again, I haven't I haven't suffered the sting of it yet, oh, so we'll see. Alter. I will I will freely admit uh, that I hate it. <laughs> if I get to it and the frame rate is just so bad, it's Kari. it's disturbing. And he seems to be more fearsome than your average gangster. I doubt he'll be willing to cooperate with any law enforcement, Zach. People had high expectations for this game, and the fact that it's even disappointing is a kick in the in the guts. People had high expectations for a Deadly Premonition 2? I feel like the fact that it exists at all is like... Anticipation met. Is it is it possible to have high expectations for something that by all rights shouldn't exist? Maybe? I could see if you're a huge, huge fan of the first game, I could see uh, having expectations, but... You know, I keep thinking about that movie we stopped to see on our way here, Zach. Yeah, yeah, Captain. Deadly Premonition 1 is it was mechanically busted. The Island, 2005, directed by Michael Bay. Wow, you just saw it. For a movie being shown at a cinema complex, it was surprisingly artistic. Hell yeah, York. Coming out from my man, Michael Bay. Experimental setting mixed with hard-hitting drama. I actually never saw The Island. It was art house sci-fi. Uh, okay, there are a lot of fans of the original out there who expected this one to fix the flaws of the original. I was a big fan of the original myself, as big of a technical mess as it was. Huh. Okay. Hmm, interesting. That director's going to change the history of art house films. Yeah, I guess I can I can see that being an approach. Um, I, I guess... I tend to be of the opinion that, like... People don't make games that run bad because they're stupid idiots, you know? Or that they don't know what they're doing. If you can ship a game, you know what you're doing, to some degree. Um, I think it it's more a question of, like, team size, team budget, time of development. It's more, to me, it, it seems more about that. So, it doesn't make sense to me to expect the same team with the same budget and the same resources to suddenly make something technically better. Um, bigger team, more resources, then maybe. But it doesn't seem like, I don't think through artistry and technique you can make a game run better without more time and more money. But that, I could be wrong about that, who knows. Um, it, it is, I guess it is possible that, uh, you know, a, a group of people with the same amount of time and money but it's on different platforms and different engine and all this stuff. Ah. I guess I just don't see how it's reasonable to expect that scale. Oh. Are you following me here? This is another special film that's setting a new standard, <laughs> just like Star sure Wars is. and Blade Runner did. But uh, I guess I can understand. I can understand that expectation. This is a turning point, Zach. You may be witnessing the birth of a vital new word that will soon become a part of film history. Yes, this single movie may be responsible for creating a whole new genre several years down the line. He's got it. A genre known as island movies. I sure like the sound of that. Don't you, Zach? Not even with better dev tools, the passage of time and improvement of tech. And tech, sort of? <laughs> 
And, and by that regard, you're seeing the benefit of that. The character models look better. <laughs> this game does look better than Deadly Premonition 1. Um, it may not run better. I don't, I don't think a lot of those improvements come for free, though. Like, they don't happen automatically. Holy shit. Um, hold on. I just heard a doorbell. I'll be right back. One second. Ooh, okay. Oh, people are disappointed with the story. They say it's less Twin Peaks and more True Detective this time. Eh, it seems like it's got... Certainly copying that vibe. I don't know, what if Deadly Premonition was never a series that was about... Copying Twin Peaks, but it was just about copying whatever... Uh, whatever Sweary was uh, was doing at that or watching at that time. Ha! Ah. I don't know. It seems like I'm pretty loaded up already. Oh boy, this D-pad. Throw this out there, but I feel people have the wrong impression of video game development. Games are not really released as what I would describe as finished. I think it's better described as not broken, and that's every game. Yeah. It's, um... Games ship with, like, known bugs. Um... And I, there are some people that, like, really freak out when they hear about that, because it's like they thought that game developers were able to not only identify every bug in the game, but the not lazy ones would fix them all until the game was finished and then they would ship it. It's this weird, incorrect notion that back in the day, uh, games were not buggy. Um, they were less complicated, so I think to some degree it might have been easier to, to unit test. But, or, or it may have been easier to see when the game was fundamentally broken. But games were buggy, and yeah. You, there is a point where you run out of time and money, and that's when the game ships. That's It's really all about that. How much time and money do you have? And then you try to figure out what you can get away with with the budget and staff you have. And then, yeah, there's a time when there's no more there's no more time. I'm very satisfied I got reflections, with the decorations though. Huh? and the size of this closet, Zach. And it's even got a security box. What else could a man ask for? It's proof. That's that like every project that's ever under deadline. The yeah. Fringes of modern civilization. It's just the nature of, of work, or or budgeted projects. Yeah, but they're... I don't know. Some this isn't happening here, and and there there are some corners on the internet where people don't talk about games like they go through that process. If that makes sense. Hmm. I forgot, yeah. Your clothes would get all ruffled and weird. I remember wearing the same suit the entire game, hoping that it would, like, do something. I don't think it ever did, really. It was fun having York just look like a slob, though. I felt like it added to his mystique. Worry that people have unrealistic expectations of Cyberpunk, too. I think that's true. I mean... You could argue, you could argue like any game that's as looked forward to as Cyberpunk is gonna have some amount of uh, people overhyping themselves, but yeah, I do feel like uh, <laughs> I feel like yeah, there's it's gonna be interesting to see due to the nature of our work who has a meltdown when that game comes out all over America. But Zach, do you know what I hate most about living out of a hotel? Shower pressure. The shower was invented so that human beings could quickly bathe in large quantities of water, correct? Yet there are far too many hotels in our nation that have showers with embarrassingly weak water pressure. It's an outrage. And I'll keep tooting my horn about this every chance I get, believe you me. People already have unrealistic expectations for cyberpunk, yeah. I saw, like, there was something going around about how they, like, removed room customization or, or something like that and it's like that wasn't ever and that never announced that everyone just assumed it and now that they said no it's been removed no it was your stupid brain oh i guess i'm taking a shower all right sparkle oh fine wait is that what that's for a wall running yeah 
can't remember if it had... I guess it did have wall running in that one demo. But wall running's really... Raw, raw, yeah. Wall running is pretty hard to pull off in um, first person. Imagine, imagine like wall running plus every possible gun or like katana in the game. That'd be a lot. It was shown two years ago. Yeah. I see. It's weird because I I think about like um oh car customization, gotcha, and wall running. Okay. Yes, yes, it is possible to name first person video games that have wall running. That doesn't make it not hard. Hey there, chef. What's also, it, it ends up being like one of the Shit. major mechanics because I I would what bet it takes. What are you talking about, sir? I'm the concierge, David. Okay. I just heard from our chef that you wish to learn the meaning behind our town's name. You put on yes, I've gathered a jacket that and a bow tie. Is French, but does it have any special meaning? Why, yes, sir. Of course it does. A very clear, logical meaning. All names have meanings. Would you like to know what this one means? Yes, I would. Jolly good, sir. Then allow me to explain. Lucare means square in French. Uh, Spood, thank you for the ah. sub. And? That's it. That's it? Yes, that's it, sir. Do take a gander at the town map in the lobby if it fancies you. It's beautiful, valuable, and old. I'm sure you'll understand once you see it. Now, please excuse me, sir. If you ever need anything, please don't hesitate to ask. Did you see that, Zack? That was clearly David. Not a twin, not a split personality, just the work of a true professional. It's bizarre, but I can understand it. Remember what they say, the job makes the man. I did it. Mission clear. Thought I was gonna get to walk around a little bit. Joke was on me. But yeah, sorry. I'd, I guess I just had to get a little steam, get a little steam off my chest. Didn't want people to. Zach. The old, Dozens guess, of paintings no one will ever see. The older I get, the, faint the more it rubs me the wrong way when somebody gets smug over, over something somebody else made. Now of trying to prop themselves up to be like, I'm hotel. better than this. Like, are you though? So sorry. I guess, uh, I have a... Zach, can you see him? I guess, fashion I guess sense that's... Is beyond me, I may be reading too much into it. I often do. A gentleman. But, uh, that stuff, that stuff kind of gets under my him. skin these days. What's up, Pineapple Kitten? Uh, streaming my dong, yes! Unfortunately... Wait, the, the rant? Which rant? There's been a few. <laughs> Shellshock, thanks for the resub. Do you think you're reading too much into it? Nice your tie. opinion is totally, totally valid. Yeah. Did you buy it here? I, uh, you know, it's it's always hard to. It's been a long time since someone oh, spoke right. to me. Um, no one these days ever tries to see me. Okay. It's uh, it's they hard to read tone on the internet. In the distance, but are blind to so, what's in front of them. Maybe I should give people the uh, no. benefit of the doubt a little more. Maybe they're only pretending not to see. That's what civilized society does to people. <laughs> exactly. They're really proud of their reflections, Since though. Since got their hands on civilization, they zoomed away at a frightening speed. Zoomed away from what? <laughs> so, consider Don't that. Be a fool. You know the answer. Maybe they spent their time in engine development, for me, writing shaders where they could overlay like 
3D characters on partial Ooh. reflections. Like that's kind of a neat rendering trick. A leader in a certain religion. For a Is for a small team, but maybe they spent their efforts on the wrong thing, or could have accomplished a similar effect. <sighs> Doing something else. Like you didn't have you didn't have little like flourishes like this in the original, so I think this is how you get the benefit of dev tools, is that doing opacity and reflections and shaders and stuff is, uh, you just kind of drag something on and twiddle some knobs instead of having to write your own shader. Fell tin maidens in the shrine of hunger. Find the flying serpent in the ambiguous zoo. <laughs> the missing FPS got sucked into the reflection. Serpent, yeah. And you will glimpse the other world. Here's the deal. In an ambiguous zero. Got it. But what do you mean by other world? Any scene that has a mirror in it or a reflective surface, you have to double the frames to be generous to the game. Because they're rendering two frames at once. That's what you have to do. <laughs> I have decreed it. Zack, did you hear all that? Looks like we've already taken our first step into chaos. Should have put more money into FPS rather than mirror. But such <laughs> is our duty. <laughs> like game dev story? Clicking money on the mirror thing? Carefully dismantle it piece by piece. And after we've put all the pieces back into their rightful places, the truth will reveal itself. I swear to God. Let's capture the truth. And presented with a shiny pair of silver bracelets, Zack. They seem so proud of their reflections. Sir so was like, I could use that. Totally ignorant to these games is one of those cult classic type situations. Yeah, it is. Comedy. Um, the original game was quirky and full of character and charm and, and weirdly aggressive, or really, uh, sorry. Weirdly ambitious in regards to its open world simulation. Um, and it came out in a time when there just wasn't a whole lot of games like that. We, the, the original came out deep into like Call of Duty knockoff territory. So this was just the total opposite. It was, imagine like, yeah, I'm gonna go there. It was like Demon's Souls, but for like adventure fans or, or just quirky game fans. It found an audience that really didn't have anything going on for a long time. I didn't finish Shenmue, no. Not Shenmue 3. I, I do treasure that game and I will go back and finish it. That is a promise. Have you ever been really angry at a game choice? Made you really shit all over something? At least implicitly shitting all over it? Um. Hmm. You mean just like a design decision or a story decision or something? Yeah, you're, you, Jambunctious, you're right. It doesn't take double render. Just an extra camera. Yeah. If this were, uh... Zach, here's another perfect symbol of the human condition. Hunting trophies. Like the mid-90s. And it's a buffalo hunting trophy. Now that's a surprise. I've seen several trophies made out of human skin, but never a buffalo's. Looking at him brings out this strange feeling from within me. Yes, the very same feeling I got when watching a certain film from 1984, directed by Peter Hyams, 2010. The last scene in that film filled me with such a sublime, majestic feeling. It was filled with everything that was missing from the finale of 2001, A Space Odyssey. Just talking about it makes me want to watch it again. Let's watch it once we get home. Promise, Zach. Oh. Okay. So you can... Okay, that's interesting. I guess that shows you... Okay. Yeah, it's kind of like Batman vision then. Yeah, York vision. Basically highlights the next uh, story objective, I guess. In addition to other interactables. Those footsteps are loud. Oh, we got we got stealth. Yeah, the the music distortion was nice, very uh, reverby. Let's get some more of those delicious, delicious reflections. Whether it's a restaurant or a hotel, the key to charming your customers is how you present your bathroom. He's right. I'm sure you feel the same way, don't you, Zach? Absolutely. Now this. 
This is the kind of bathroom a person can really get excited about. It might even trump the one we saw in that drug dealer's house in Austin. Remember? The art piece on display in there utilized the natural curves of human ribs in such a novel way. It was truly brilliant. What is it about this bathroom, though? Also, this giant mirror with two tiny sinks. There's, like, no countertop. <laughs> and there's one... Wait, is there one stall? Wait, what's going on in there? What the fuck? Damn it, the camera doesn't go any lower. There's something in there. Looks like it's some kind of palatial spread. There's like rugs and orbs and stuff. It's a set. Can you get the camera back there? Uh, I can try. Uh... Huh. Weird. Actually, no, I bet it's just the next room. Let's find out. Yeah, maybe. I mean... Oh, there's a sprint! Holy crap! Okay, yeah. Stamina meter. Look at him go! This game just kicked into overdrive. Oh, I can't go into the ladies' room. Yeah, that's where they're hiding all the frames! They stacked them all back up That. Oh, come on. Give me all my frames, man! This is unacceptable. Also, I don't know what that... There's a notification. This? I'm gonna get some side quests. Get on off skateboard. Excellent. That's just excellent. God bless. God bless that button. Maybe it's a guidebook notification? Oh, I think it is. Ah, maybe that's what it is. Yeah, there was a little new. Oh, well, there's multiple new. Hmm. Maybe that's not what it is. It's still there! Hitting plus just does this, so maybe that's just it. It's like active quests. Dang it, I didn't mean to do that. I used my eyeball meter. I guess it just regens over time. Zach, this is Lucare. Well, I think I'm finally baby. starting to understand what our concierge was trying to say. You can tell this town was built by a very methodical person. No, wait. Maybe they just didn't care, and that's why it ended up this way. It's just another symbol of mankind's obsession with molding nature to fit our own rules. Oh, okay. Had to download the map into my Zach, amazing FBI brain. Guns Oracle. Also, it's 05. We should have smartphones. Despite all the dramatic buildup, it's little more than a childish riddle. Heartwarming, really. Exactly the kind of feeling one gets from the good old-fashioned countryside. <laughs> now let's start by tracking down those ten maidens. The Oracle gave us a place and an act. We need to go to the Shrine of Hunger and fell ten maidens. Now where in this town can one satiate their hunger? The hotel and where? And the ten things that need to be knocked down. Simple, right? Ten pancakes. The answer is bowling. The shape iPhone 3G of the bowling wasn't until 2007? The feminine no, I meant, I meant more like, um... Or the ten pins. They still had, like, blackberries and stuff. And a place but where yeah. someone can both eat and bowl at the same time. I know, I know it was pre-iPhone. ...be able to find such a place in a backwoods town like this. This music, though. Man. Yeah, like PDAs. Yeah, the OG Razor. They didn't have GPS? Yes, they did. Did they? 
I remember my phone had GPS in like 2008 and 9. Yeah, maybe not. Maybe not. Start listening very carefully. You're gonna get some more goofy puzzles. These are very serious puzzles. Alexis's diner. And I'm late. sure of it. Check the bathroom in eyes mode. I didn't. I'll go check that out. This is Ed Garmin. That's right. Yeah. There are even pins and a bowling ball on the side. I bet we'll be able to eat some Cajun cuisine and bowl there. Maybe even both at the same time. Nice job, Zach. I knew you'd be able to find it. Now for the other oracle. There's no flying serpent on this map. Could it be a contrail or perhaps a dragon? I'm sure we'll find out later. Tom Toms. I have one of those stolen out of my car. <laughs> First, let's just figure out where we need to go. Do you know what the ambiguous zero represents? Zero is usually treated as a base number, but under what conditions would a base number be ambiguous? The answer is temperature, Zach. Yes, zero degrees Fahrenheit is minus 17.7 degrees Celsius, and zero degrees Celsius is 32 degrees Fahrenheit. You'd be hard pressed to find a more ambiguous zero than that. The question is, does our zero refer to Celsius or Fahrenheit? Let's think for a moment. We're in Louisiana. Which measurement system do we use here in America? Yeah, we, we certainly use Imperial. <coughs> ah, excuse me. Huh. Flying serpent in the ambiguous zero. I legit have no idea. Yeah, that billboard, I've been trying to read it. It's I can't make it out though. Looks like fruit, maybe? Yeah, in the picture there's a billboard. Uh yeah, I was thinking maybe freezers. Because they talked about freezing. Let's find out. Parks and Food Delivery Services Cold Storage Warehouse. Sure. That's got to be it. Even with this blazing sun in the sky, they can easily keep the temperature below freezing. So I guess chicken? Be honest now, Zach. You knew the answer from the very start, didn't you? What's a flying serpent? Who knows? That's right, you get paid by the FBI for solving minor... Minor mysteries. And how about that Hoongan? What a mysterious character. His oracles may end up determining how much time we spend in this town. Sorry, boss, but this is a smoke-free hotel. If you're dying of smoke, Head out the entrance and you'll find a smoking area in the rear parking lot. Don't tell me. You're the bell. At your service, boss. Are you good friends with the concierge and the chef? I like his body language yeah, changes. We work at the same place, yeah. <laughs> but uh, I can't really say whether we're good friends with each other. We're all professionals, though. Nothing more, nothing less. I believe we've struck gold here, Zack. It just screams deep south. Actually, no, it doesn't. Hmm. No, it this doesn't. This is all his charm. Yeah. So, if I want to smoke, I should go out the entrance and around to the rear parking lot? Bada bing, bada boom. He moves and okay. acts like I'll play by your coach room. in anonymous YouTube videos. Like, he's swapping clothes and he even does the, like, like finger point. 
he straight up, I swear to God, he moves like a Gmod character and acts like a Gmod character with like his goofy voices and facial animation. what's happening but I like it we always strive to provide our guest with the finest of service sir our humble bucolic town does have its inconveniences shopping in particular can be a bit of a slog let's be uploaded to YouTube yes of course everything therefore we decided to provide a modest selection of daily necessities right here at our very own front desk great sounds convenient Exactly. Man, I am so into this music. Serving you is my greatest pleasure, sir. Please do let me know if there is any other way for me to assist you. Oh yeah, I forgot. I was supposed to go to the go to the bathroom. I don't I hope I can see something with my eye. It doesn't seem like the eye shows you anything that you don't see in normal vision. Also, it's weird. You're like you're not rotating in place when you're in eyeball mode. Maybe it's because they have to cut to a different camera that can't be overlapping with where you are. But yeah. Jamie Lannister, hey, thanks for the sub. Here's the, this is the place I come when I'm pissed. Well, hopefully it uh, hopefully it helps you get rid of that pissedness and not make it worse. That'd be bad. All right, I have quests now. Okay. Strike. Okay, yeah, and that's right. There was a. It was all normal passage of time, which had big Shenmue vibes. They made you do the thing where you had to, like, be at a certain place at a certain time. And all the residents of the town had their own daily routines, and you had to, like, catch them somewhere. Oh, yeah, this is when the, this is when the frame rate's supposed to die, right? When game get bad? I don't know. I grew up playing games on a... I feel like if you, if you play games on N64, you can manage low frame rates. I... I'm usually a frame rate guy, but I'll. That's if I'm like hard gaming, you know? It was a lot worse for me at nighttime. Ah, okay. Nighttime Overland. All those sick lighting effects bouncing all over the place. I don't know why they refuse to fix it, because they may not have money, dude. Like, what? <laughs> Maybe if the game sells a ton, but it's fucking Deadly Premonition 2. You want them to, to work on it for free? Yeah, human eye can only see 12 FPS anyway. Any more than that, and that's just wasted frames. But I bought the game, used my money, put it in the machine to make it go fast. The money went into the machine to pay off the debt that they incurred to make the game in the first place. Compared to non-smokers, smokers have a 4.7 times greater chance of getting lung disease. They made Mario 64 to 60 FPS? That game did you know not run at 60 FPS. Are you kidding me? Asbestos poisoning? Also, if we're, if we're only taking the top frame rates, then the, the risk of death from lung cancer is actually much lower than what you think it is. I guess if you have the camera like pointed to the ground, also my, oh, never mind. If you in have fact, the camera pointed to the ground in Mario 64. Compared to heart disease, strokes, and pneumonia. You probably get up to We're 60. always surrounded by easy ways to die, you know. Some yeah. people even get randomly struck by lightning and die right there on the spot. Then I reckon you also know that secondhand smokers have 1.3 times greater the risk compared to smokers? Of course. So you won't mind paying the damages when I die of lung disease? How about writing that in a contract for me? You got a pen, right? <laughs> Even the stream went to 5 FPS. Deadly Premonition 2 is a black hole that sucks in all frames. Uh, 
I promise to protect you from all the evil in our world. Well, that's stupid. By the way, what's your name? FBI Special Agent Francis York Morgan. Please, just call me York. That's what everyone calls me. Um, is something wrong with you? Adults ain't supposed to act like that. Hey, what's I up, Gar cup of tea? I asked your name so I can write it on the contract. You should have been able to figure that out if you're a real FBI agent like you said. Come on, sign here. Right here on the paper. Just as I thought, Zack. This contract paper, it's a San Rouge wrapper. San Rouge is here, too. This must mean that San Rouge is connected to the Lee's Clarkson murder case somehow. This is a sprawling case that spread across the entire South. It's within our jurisdiction, Zack. We'll need to steal the right to investigate from the local authorities at once. <laughs> By the way, Chris, what's your name? Said it out loud. Trisha Woods. But I gotta write my name myself, or else it won't be a real signature. Tell me, Patricia, does this town have a sheriff, or is it under the jurisdiction of the nearest city police? Perfect timing. Well, go on and steal it if you want it. I was just thinking about how this is way out of my daddy's league. Thank you for the information, Patricia. Okay, Zach, it's time to get to work. How should we seize control from the sheriff this time? <laughs> okay, well, they're more on the nose about it. Melee attack. Oh, well, yep, there it is. Woo! Look at that draw distance, though. Yeah, I feel like if they, uh... Hey, Zach, it looks like we were right on the money. Boy, that, that hey, sound... Hey, um... My daddy's still in the parking lot. I thought you were gonna steal the right to investigate from him. Hurry it up! That's true, that's what I was going to do. Oop, nope, come on. Here I am. Yeah, these are some tasty frames. Here's the thing about frames. The fewer you get, the more you learn to savor them. And I am savoring these frames. So, what do you think of him? Yes, I'm talking about him. Ungan. Is the skeletal gentleman friend or foe? Or does he merely exist outside the realms of either? Still too early to tell. But it's clear that he'll be the key to uncovering this case's mysteries. That's what my soul tells me. These headlights, man. By the way, Zack, Hoongan feels very familiar to me. You Radical. might even say he reminds me of someone. <laughs> what yes, the fuck is this game? I think I see the connection now. <laughs> A cheerful, wise, yet also mysterious African American who appeared in a variety of different films. My mind must be overlapping him with the skeletal gentleman. Do you remember his name? Ah, oh, yes, that's it. Scatman Crothers. In 1980, he played Dick Halloran in The Shining. And in 1983, he was in the Twilight Zone. He played the man who invited all those elderly folks into a strange new world. I knew it, Zack. There's definitely a connection here. But he's a bit too old. Scatman's more of a sage character. Our skeletal gentleman is a little younger, isn't he? Yes. They have different body types, but what about Forrest Whitaker? He made his debut in 1982 in Fast Times at Ridgemont High. Then he was in Platoon and Color of Money, both released in 1986. Followed by Good Morning Vietnam in 1987. Oh, he was in 1988. What an impressive filmography. Across the 80s, he transformed his rough, young image into a more cheerful wiser. That's why the 80s can also be described as the decade that built up Forrest Whitaker's career. I firmly believe that he'll win an Academy Award for Best Actor someday. Yes, I'm sure it's right around the corner. He'll most likely wait until the time is right. Maybe around next year, then he'll unleash his best performance yet. So I could go on about famous actors forever, but we have a case to solve here. Let's table this discussion for now. Tony Hawk's IMDb simulator. <laughs> oh, this game is a treasure. I think it has too many frames, actually. I could do with a few, a few fewer frames. Just take them out. You know what? I don't need them. Donate them to somebody else. 
Find a find a poor child, a poor cancerous child. Give that hey child there. the frames. So, uh, you're the fella from the FBI I've been hearing so much about. I'm Melvin. They call me the sheriff around here. FBI Special Agent Francis York Morgan. But call me York if you can. That's what everyone calls me. I believe this skateboarding huh? audio was intentional to be similar to the original <laughs> game's audio mixing. All right. There's been some elements of that. Mr. York. The, like, the loud How's footprints and stuff. Fine by me. It's always so hard, and it should be hard, sure you to tell how much out. of it is on purpose and how much of it is an accident. a small one. Yeah, folks are already busy spreading gossip about how some FBI agents come to town. Now, uh, I reckon you came from the city. What was it? D.C., L.A., or New York? Anywho, in the city, it's normal not to know who your neighbor is. Fella who moves in next to you could cook up a dozen folks in his backyard, and no one would bat an eye. That's the city for you. Now, I never lived in one myself, but I visited him a few times, so I know what it's like. All pigs must die in the city of wolves. Yeah! Now, does that sound badass or what? Uh, you feel there was some internal resistance to optimizing the game's performance? Because they recognize James as part of the I know, charm. I know, CLG. I'm just trying to make a little small talk, that's all. Maybe? I, I If anything, it points Anywho, to where they put their, their attention and time. Parts, everyone knows each other's name. I don't think you can set out to so make a game where it's like, when they see we're going to make a game that's going like to run and pretty bad. Duty to protect the town, right. I thought I'd stop by. I don't think that's enough. something you can target. Zach I think looks it's something like the sheriff is quite the happy go lucky type. A clear indication of just how peaceful this town is. Loud plane. Melvin, about the Lee's Clarkson case. I knew you were here for that case. Can't put one past the FBI. Mm. Yeah, nobody so wants to do even bad got work. Eyes on the smallest of towns like but us, huh? I can definitely I think it's probably more Our likely at some point filled with information. Uh, and it's all within their grasp. Oh, boy, this camera work is amazing. FBI, the Federal Bureau of Investigation. <laughs> there there must have been a time when they could have chosen to delay the game. The Clarkson case is connected to a top secret hire case. more people. I know, I know. Or something. If you're fixing to take the lead. <laughs> they chose not to because they didn't right have ahead. money or I'm they didn't have time. I'm just the sheriff of a tiny little town. Or they thought creatively it would work. From beating the piss out of I each think other. often it's an intersection of both. Folks complain. Um, pardon me while I take a brief aside. But that's often that's often the gimmick of like of YouTube production is you make it low rent on purpose so the parts that are actually low rent don't stick out. It's creative unity at that point. Um, everything I did at Funhouse and, and Inside Gaming always had to have that like, but this is actually shitty, like self awareness to it. Because if it didn't have that, then it would be very obvious that it's trying to be what it's not. But like, you know, in Google Trends, if if the trend master is wearing a shitty prop hat with like something taped on it, then it telegraphs that this is supposed to be low rent. So the parts that are low rent don't stick out. Um, Honestly, I haven't so played Bloodstain two yet. Been weighing me down. I will. Uh, I'll so get I'm to it. So I'm give you my full cooperation, Mr. Special Agent, sir. Well, Zach, that was anticlimactic. <laughs> I didn't even get to use my secret weapon. Melvin, there's a cold storage warehouse on the southern end of town, isn't there? I'd oh, like to get Captain Full Body came out on Switch a few so days ago. What? You want to see where the body's being kept, right? Oh, I get it now. Lisa's body, yeah, yeah. Now, uh, that's what I call a special agent. You already figured that much out. Mm. They got that pointer tech down. But, they got uh, that hand articulation. I'm That's not free. Not too sure that uh, firing those finger guns like that. Going yow, down yow, yow. at this point is really going to help much, you know. Explain it yourself, Daddy. Oh my That's God. incredible. I don't believe this. Amazing. Did you hear that, Zach? They put the body in a cold storage warehouse. This is fantastic. Insanely fantastic. R really? Well, uh, how about that? <laughs> well, all right then. 
I'll head on down to the warehouse ahead of you and make sure we get permission to search it. Sounds good. The management company only keeps the warehouse open during certain hours, so you'll have to come during those hours. I ain't looking to create any further disturbances. So be on time. Got it? Come on, let's roll, CLG. I'm gonna walk home, Daddy. I still got another stop to make. What oh, CLG? If you say so, sweetie. Clever little girl. <laughs> She's a real sharp one, as you can see. So I try to stay out of her way. Well, all right then, York. I'll see you at the warehouse. Does it, does it actually stand for clever little girl? And we'll see. We'll see if I'm if I'm on this game's wavelength. Yeah, that's pretty low frame rate. Luckily, I got the skateboard. Oh. Hey, you! You ain't secretly cutting kids up and sticking them into jars while you work as an FBI agent on the surface, are you? Or using your FBI connections to sell kids to child trafficking organizations? I've arrested people who've done both, but I've never engaged in either of those activities myself. CLG is what parents call their kids. Is that, is that real? Of course, I have imagined doing such things in order to learn more about the psychology of the criminals I deal with. It was just a joke. Why are you getting all serious? And don't tell me what you imagine, or else I'll get scared of you for real. Hey, can I come with you? You signed a contract with me, remember? And besides, I'm kind of worried about my daddy. Do whatever you like. This is America, land of the free. But I have one condition. What condition? Don't ask me about Zack. It's a private matter. Zack, it feels like she's carrying something. <laughs> Immediately talks to Zack. Kind of reminds me of you back when we first met. Out loud. I can't leave her alone like this. You feel the same way, don't you? Okay. Hell yeah. Time for adventure. So wait, is she just gonna run after? Oh, okay, she disappears. It's time to shred the gnar. Very sick. The streets in New Orleans were a mess. Melvin called you a strange name. CLG, I think. What exactly does that mean? Clever little girl. That's what it stands for, at least. It's nice that he made up his own nickname for me and all, but it sounds kind of weird. I wish he'd call me something normal, like just Patricia or Patty, you know? Patty? Now that name's got a ring to it. I like it. How about Zach and I call you Patty from here on out? Do whatever you like. Weirdo. You're heading to the warehouse, right? You gonna go straight there? Well, I'm not sure yet. I'll have to talk to Zack. We're also on a mission to fell ten maidens, you see. I'm eager to visit Alexis's diner in Lane, but we've only just arrived in this town, so it might be nice to stroll around a bit. What? I thought you came here to investigate. Patty, you're still just a child. Why do you worry so much? We're born to be free, and this is America, land of the free. You should always feel free to do whatever you want. Isn't that right, Zack? Maybe I shouldn't have come with you. I'm getting kind of nervous now. Man. Is this the best game ever? I like how every time you pump... Oh boy, you can get... You can get... You can get He's movement in. if you... No, oh, nothing. Just feel like saying that. If you spam it. Alright, alright. Uh, I want to go to the diner. I feel like that's where... Oh, hold on. Oh! Someone who is phasing in and out of existence. Three lollipops. Don't mind me, Zach. This is how I wake myself up. No problem. Hello, residents. Oh, you can't just talk to randos. Yeah, the girl definitely shows up and you get off the board. Which is pretty immersive. Whoop, she's gone. Oh, there she is. Plenty of ghosts. They're semi-transparent. 
Uh, let's see. What would the... That doesn't look like the diner. That... Look, yeah, that's definitely the diner. Okay. Did you notice it yet? The streets in New Orleans were a mess. All busted up and undergoing maintenance. The city was built on a swamp, so the ground is soft. All it takes is some heavy rain to cave it all in. There were also a lot of places where large tree roots were pushing up parts of the asphalt and the sidewalk. Those bumps were dangerous even when we still had our car, remember? But this town is different. The streets are all paved so cleanly that we can skate along them without a care in the world. I'm glad that they acknowledge that. Trash or graffiti to be found anywhere. The Clarksons truly do control this place. Hell yeah. An American hearse. Oof. Some decent graffiti, too. When we don't see you, do you phase out or do we? Well, given that all reality is based on me, you guys are the ones that fade out. I'm the only one that stays... I am the only permanent thing in all of existence, actually. So these are like the default poser models. Or Unity models, I guess. They don't look like they, they clash creatively. Not yet, anyway. Maybe they get more default the further away you get. Hell yeah! Free shit in the trash! Give me that! More important hints. Huh? What the? Why did you tell me that? exactly what visions are supposed to tell me. Didn't realize you were into solipsism. I'm not. Um, well, to some degree, it's, it can be a little hard to get away from it at some point if you're just diving into your own brain, but... No, uh, that's more like... I was more riffing on people who were... whether consciously or unconsciously... Uh, have yet to acknowledge the existence of other people and that their identity and image or in value of self might be the same as theirs. People just haven't had that emotive evolution yet. Man, this, this music is there though. Daddy, is something wrong? This this feels like it feels like a similar vibe. It feels like the sequel to Deadly Premonition, which I never thought I'd play. But yeah, just rolling around a, a town that's mostly empty and not rendered all that well to some fantastic music. It feels like coming home. Oh, uh, Constable Mittens, you gotta you gotta bail out. All right. Thank you for watching. Appreciate you. I got something to say. Huh. When I first met you in the hotel parking lot. You mentioned Saint Rouge, right? If you want to find it, maybe you should track down Professor R. Professor R? Yeah. Professor R owns the jazz bar on the other side of yeah, the bayou. Yeah, we got big, big FPS here, Sparks. I overclocked my switch. I didn't, actually. How do you know that? It's on a fresh battery, though, so that's... It's got all the voltage it needs. That's uh, something. because. Because, huh? Another side quest? Alright. He better get coffee. He has to get coffee and pie, right? Give me these tropes. They're not even tropes, it's just the thing that happened before. This is America. Wood paneling. Linoleum uh, tables. I'll use my specialized.
What? Special sale for Sunburn customers only. That's cute. It makes a new save file every time? Or that's the default? So wait, there's one bowling lane? You can just sit here, like, eating next to somebody who's actively bowling? Oops, dang it, that's not sprint. Just mess up the oil a little bit. A bowl of Christmas ornaments? I mean, really, it's combining two of the best things. You can get, like, biscuits and coffee. Bowl a little bit. Yeah, it'd be nice if he slipped and fell. Uh, quick break, guys. Bathroom time. I'll be right back. He was caught by but a perverted justice member talking to a young team. Sorry about that. It will be a bit of a loop over. Yeah, this Friday, Tinker. Um, every Friday I do a, a chunk of um, streams that are just the clips. And, uh, yeah, I'll do that this evening. I'm gonna have to figure out a way to keep and... It may not be this evening. I have, uh... Something going on this evening. I usually want to make sure I keep an eye on chat just to make th sure things don't get spontaneously racist. Um, so we'll see. If I can find a way to keep an eye on it, then I'll do it, but... I might have to wait until tomorrow. Do you have a hard drive you dedicate to the stuff? Uh, it's a portion of hard drive, yeah. It's not nearly as much space as you might think. Cause it, I, I do an edit pass on everything, so I end up transcoding it into H.264, which is pretty efficient. H.265 seems like it's even more efficient, which is awesome. Yeah, Absor. I'm enjoying the heck out of this game so far. Who knows where it's gonna go? Like, genuinely, I have no idea, but... Let's topple their hourglass figures and complete this oracle once and for all. Oh my lord. I don't believe I've seen you around here before. <laughs> Sorry, honey, but you can't smoke in here. Since you're with Patricia, I'm guessing you're some friend of Melvin's. He's Agent York from the FBI. This is Alexis, the owner of this restaurant. I'm helping out Agent York in his investigation. We signed a contract. Oh my lord! Well, ain't that something? I'm FBI Special Agent Francis York Wait, Morgan. Wait, is she... Please, call sisters? me York. Everyone's the... always called me that. Wasn't that the same oh last name lord. as, um, well, Kevin in the hotel? Well, that's the strangest introduction I've Kevin? ever heard. I don't remember that guy's name. No wonder everyone in town's been talking about you. Said her name name isn't David too. David. Yeah. Brooks was here. Thanks for the sub. I'm I happy I'm playing this too. Sunday, but no uh, cherries. I want timing. two wafers instead. Don't put too many Rice Krispies on it. Oh, but don't scrimp on the chocolate syrup either. Oh my lord. And what'll it be for you, honey? Alexis, are these photos of the town? Oh, you like my pictures? Hobby's collecting snapshots of what a town used to be like. So whenever someone gives me an old picture, I just put it up here on display. Our world these days feels a bit cold to me, you know? Just thought it'd be nice to help folks remember what it was like in the good old days. Zach, did you hear that? The good old days. Even in a remote town that's already far behind the times, there are still people who yearn for the past. <laughs> she told me what was going on, you know. What? Lise, you don't need to try and hide it from me, honey. Last time she came here, she told me all about it. Some odd fella was following her around. Stalking her like. What kind of fellow? She said he had a really tall shadow. How tall? As tall as an oak tree. Did that ring any bells for you? Sadly, it didn't. I know just about everyone in this here town, but I ain't never seen a man who stands that tall. Maybe it really was an oak tree and she just mistook it for someone. Sometimes the silhouettes of them trees with lots of Spanish moss hanging down, 
make me feel a little funny too. I don't think so, Alexis. Lise mm -hmm. said the shadow was following her, correct? That means she must have been stalked by a man as tall as an oak tree. That's what that means. If she had only mistaken an oak tree for a person, she wouldn't have described it that way. She might have said, hmm. It felt like a crowd of people was staring at me. Yes, exactly. She certainly wouldn't have talked about being followed by someone. Thank you, Patty. Can't crack so this, this man's mind. It's all very intriguing, but it isn't the answer we're looking for. Razor we sharp. Knock down the ten maidens, remember? Oh, yeah! Booyah! Oh, I got a turkey! <laughs> Truly mesmerizing, Zach. This is why I never tire of small town investigations. What a comfortable place to Same have goes some, for you, uh, right? Have some breakfast. Some granny just like crotch chopping and screaming at the top of her lungs. Agent York, if you're fixing to bowl, you're gonna be disappointed. Mrs. Carpenter never lets anyone else use the lane while she's here. Patty, that's exactly what I came to do. You see, Zach and I need to bowl down ten maidens. Fine. Go on and try if you uh. wanna. But I'm gonna eat my sundae. <laughs> nice. That looks really good. Hey! Are you nuts? It's like PS2 era... Uh, What's the most addictive drug in the quality world? Quality food, but How man. I know? It's sugar, Patty. I need the hell Far out of that. Far more people die from obesity and diabetes than from cocaine and heroin. God, I'd annihilate that shit. Alexis, would All you right, give her some milk? To me, I guess. Oh my lord. Coming right up, honey! Sugar might be dangerous, but it ain't against the law. You got no right to take that from me, even if you are some FBI agent. Actually, Patty, I do. We signed a contract, remember? I promised to protect you from all the evil in our world. Hey! Mm. Mm. Delicious. What an amazing chocolate sundae. Zach, I think we just uncovered an incredible treasure here. I feel like I could eat one of these every day while we're in this town. Oh. That's like how he knocked it back in two gulps. York just unhinged his jaw and took that ice cream like a goddamn tournament eater. That's, this is why he's the best. We just swallowed the wafers and like n poured the rest down his back. <laughs> What'll it be, honey? Ah. Is this place a bowling alley or a restaurant? Oh my lord, what's wrong, honey? Can't tell the difference? It says restaurant right there on the outside. Yeah. And how do you explain that then? That's so the customers can bowl while they eat. Convenient, ain't it? <laughs> I don't know who to compare York to. He's like house, but not as grumpy, just the opposite. I mean, he's... He's just Dale Cooper from um, Twin Peaks, right? Like, endlessly inquisitive, kind of unrestrained by normal adult logic. Was his first name Dale? I can't remember. Cooper. Um, it seems like a pretty similar archetype to that, which is like super on the nose, so it's tough to find something else. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know. I was like shades of like the Robert Downey Sherlock, but not quite as aggressive. If you want a bowl, honey, you'll have to ask Mrs. Carpenter to open up the lane for you. But if you just want to eat, then all you need to do is call my name. Got it? He's like Data as Sherlock. Hmm. Yes. With a lot more whimsy, but yeah, yeah, that's a real, that's really close, man. I think you got as close as, <laughs> as close as you can get. Man, those episodes were classic. I remember really liking those because it was just focused on like, I mean, it was it was the same style of episode, but it really drove home the fact that you can like good writing can good writing can find an interesting question in any narrative, or maybe twist a narrative to ask an interesting question. Duck hash sounds good. I can't get red beans and rice. 
Oh, he's gonna eat it now? Oh. Alright, well. <laughs> so, what do you think of my Cajun food, honey? He just had a sip of... No complaints here. No wonder you call this restaurant the best Louisiana's got to offer. Yeah, I'm just good with coffee, thank you. Oh my but lord. But I'll pay for the whole thing. That nice of you. I'm sure glad to hear you like Cajun flavor. It's nothing like that Creole food. And I'll be damned if it isn't the best eating you'll find this side of the Mississippi. Mm, hold on just one moment, Alexis. I always thought that both Creole and Cajun food were staples of the South. Time to learn. This game is, I guess, is shockingly educational. Am I misunderstanding something? Not at all, honey. Cajun and Creole food are both staples of the South. They both have roots in French cooking, of course. But Creole cooking just ain't my cup of tea. Sauces of France combined with cooking methods brought in from Africa, mixed in with Spanish influences and Italian-style tomato sauce. <laughs> when you smush all that together, you can't even tell what it is no more. <laughs> Cajun food is pure and solid. The Acadians who settled in Canada brought it here from France in the 1600s. Then the British chased them off their land and they ran all the way down here. They walked straight across America, north to south. Finally, they found a safe haven right here in Southwest Louisiana. Woo, we got everything you'd ever want here Fresh fish, wildlife, even veggies and fruit. They used their knowledge of French cooking and added some spice and herbs. Oh, and then they threw in fresh local ingredients to create what we know as Cajun cuisine. Interesting. Now I understand what you mean about <laughs> the Cajun and Creole food being completely different. But I still insist that both are shining examples of delicious local food. Roots and history aren't that important, are they? Oh, my Lord. You don't get it, do you, honey? Oh, dude. Lately, there are shops all over the place calling themselves Cajun, Creole, or whatnot. But all they serve is a hot mess of different ingredients loaded with spices. Yeah. And the tourists ain't none the wiser. I just hate feeling like folks are getting the wrong impression about Cajun food. I get it now. According to your interpretation, Creole food is contributing to that wrong impression. He keeps restating back to her to demonstrate his understanding. It's like a... Isn't that like a technique that they teach people to promote empathy? You bet it is. That's why I always make sure to teach all my customers what's what. I feel like that's... It's like a phase of couples counseling. What'll it be, honey? Okay. Not everything is voiced. That's that's one of those other ways that like this game is invisibly better than the last one, is that it has a lot more VO. And it's all pretty good. It's all actually really good so far. Um, and then it has voice work. Uh, or sorry, it has um what am, I, what am I thinking? It has lip syncing a little bit. Seems like uh, some of it is just algorithmic. Like, they just did lip flaps to a waveform or something, but... Some of the more important ones look like they, they had a pass. Like a by-hand pass. So, it's like... I don't recall the lip sync just being stellar in the original, so that's not, it's not so bad. Are you heading out, Kala? Cool, see ya. Have a good Friday. Power will course through my veins, will calm my mind and refill my stamina. Now this is like straight up video game territory, man. Got an NPC. Got an NPC out here telling me that my mind will be refreshed. It's got flavor? Let's get in there, York. 
We only had one sip of coffee so far, so plenty of room left. Oh. Ah, uh, here's the crafting part, huh? One rice. Okay. That doesn't seem that hard. Can't wait to find a single rice. Yeah. I mean, probably just look around on the ground. Shouldn't take that long. I keep forgetting which bumper it is. Leading to burnout of the concentration. Having a really hard time last month. Watching streams helped me put it aside, so thank you. Young Sleepo, I'm sorry, or Slepo. I'm sorry you're going through rough times, dude. And I, I understand that sentiment. There was, there was a couple of cozy streams I leaned on when I was going through rough stuff. It helped. Um, so I'm glad I could, glad I could be there for you in some way. All right, I'm gonna switch games. Uh, Curse of the Moon 2, which is a sequel to a Bloodstained spinoff, which is actually really, really good. The, the original was, so I'll be there in like a minute. Seriously, I'm not going anywhere, so. Coming up! Yeah,